I played Breath of the Wild for like 6,000 hours and having completed every single shrine more than 100 times in several speed and challenge runs, I thought it was about time that I rated every single one of them. I decided to only rate the 120 base shrines though, since the DLC shrines are all just so much better that it would be kind of unfair to include them. If you want to see a video about just those, I can make that too, just let me know in the comments. That being said, I rated the shrines from a 1 to 5. Think of it like 1 to 5 stars. I did that because I thought in a 1 to 10 rating, sometimes the difference between like a 6 and 7 is too small to really notice. So this way a 3 is like your average shrine, a 2 and 4 are bad and good shrines, and a 1 and 5 are the worst and best shrines. Also I gave the shrines 2 ratings. One for casual play and one for speedrunning, since the experience can obviously differ quite a bit depending on what you do. With that out of the way, get ready for a long video, where I give you probably way too much info on all of Breath of the Wild's shrines I obtained over the years. Keep in mind, this is gonna be my list, so buy us ahead, but feel free to let me know your opinion anyway. Oh, and if you want, this is a good video to put under the background while you do something else and just listen in. Also, I'm getting really close to 100,000 subscribers now, which is crazy. So I would really appreciate that if you like this content and you're not subscribed yet, you'd consider it. Thank you. But for now, enjoy my rating of every Breath of the Wild shrine. So, um, I think to all of the plateau shrines already have a pretty good advantage because you actually get a meaningful item in them. It's not just like a random chest. Obviously, you get a rune that's gonna be part of your journey the entire time. So I think when it comes to casual rating, what's important is to find out how well did this shrine explain the Rump Bomb Rune. And I think this shrine did pretty good. Um, you start out by figuring out that you can use bombs to break blocks like this easy way to tell then you can kind of tell um this is a this is a good explanation for the remote feature of the bomb right that you can basically throw it on like a platform and explode it when the bomb isn't even there um isn't even close to you not like the original bombs so this is a good way to explain the remote bombs and then this is an even better way to explain the remote bombs it's unfortunately what i don't like about this specific part of the shrine is that this feature is rarely ever used later in the game there's like very few shrines where you actually use the bomb rune like this but i think this is a good way to do it i think the one thing that i'm missing here is that they don't explain that you can use bombs for combat they could have maybe added like a random guardian in here but that's all it is. It's a good tutorial shrine for bombs. I'm gonna rate it a 3 out of 5 on average shrine casually. That being said, I do have to talk about speedrunning as well. So this is gonna be pretty much what you expect from a Breath of the Wild puzzle shrine and a good job. It does a good job at doing the tutorial, but it's not gonna be any higher than that. So it's gonna be 3 out of 5 casually. But speedrunning wise, this shrine is very polarizing. The reason it's so polarizing is because it sucks. Um, the fastest strat, which we call the Gamer Wind Bomb, is unfortunately quite inconsistent. The main idea is that you can technically do a wind bomb from the beginning of the shrine all the way to the end. And I was actually almost able to do it here, but you can kind of see the problem is the ceiling is very low and a lot of speedruns actually die in the bomb shrine, which is why people hated it. I do have to give it some credit though, because back in the day, there were so such, such a great amount of cool strategies for the bomb shrine. We've seen strategies where people use these pistons to fly over to the other side. Let's jump, let's ragdoll. And then here we go. You can see Link is flying much further. It's a pretty creative way to get over to the other side of the shrine. With recency bias, I will have to give the shrine a two out of five speedrunning wise just because of how many runs die to the shrine. It's not one of the worst ones because it has, it has a cool history and when the strat does work out, it's pretty cool. But with the amount of killed runs to the shrine, I can't confidently say that it's average or even better. So it's gonna be two out of five speedrunning wise. Let's move on to Magnesis, which is shrine number two. Now, one thing I didn't mention, and this is probably good to mention when we talk about casual playthrough for Magnesis, is that the surroundings of the shrine are actually also acting as a tutorial. I guess there is guardians around the bomb shrine, which, and even if you do the bomb shrine at night, there tend to be a lot of skeleton spawns, so it kind of can teach you that you can use bombs to deal damage. There's also a breakable block right next to the shrine. Magnesis does the same thing. They show you some items underwater um, that you can grab with the Magnesis rune. There's obviously metal boxes around the shrine, so once you actually obtain the rune, you can kind of use it in the overworld to um, your advantage. In speedruns, we used to do that in the past as well. Um, 
Unfortunately, not as much anymore. This rune tends to be pretty useless these days. But I think that's uh, something that the shrine does a good job at. Also, I think this is probably most people's first shrine. Uh, since most people go down here, get the tower, and then the shrine is right in front of them. I'm, I'm pretty sure the old man even points you into the, this direction specifically. So, uh, or even like walks there or something. So this is probably most people's first shrine. The Omen Owl Shrine does pretty much all I have to say to the location and the uh, outside. When it comes to inside the shrine, again, I'm gonna basically, because it's a tutorial shrine for the Great Plateau, just rate how good of a job it did to introduce us to the rune, as obviously we get it right away. At the start of the shrine, we can see that we can move away metal objects. Um, Magnesis in general is not a super explored rune. We can then, and I'm pretty sure the maybe the intended solution was to take this block and then push the other block away or like push the wall away. That's something that works. I don't know if they were intending on teaching us that you can technically use metal blocks like this to interact with enemies. At least they gave you the option to find this out, so that's definitely a good thing to do. And then being creative with the rune in general to build a bridge. I think the shrine does a pretty good job. One thing that stands out is um, that they don't necessarily show that you can also use magnesis on weapons themselves, but they did also include the fact that you can use it on metal um, items. And then last but not least, one thing. Um, that I feel like they could have specifically taught is, and they do show this at the bottom of the screen here, but there's no real reason to ever do this, uh, that you can actually just use the D-pad at the bottom to um, open doors. For example, you can press the D-pad back, that's what we do in speedruns, and then press B to get a smooth door opening to get to the end of the shrine. All things considered, it's again the same thing like bombs, it's, it's not bad, it's not super stand outish it does a good job at the tutorial i would say it's technically slightly better than bombs going even more into detail uh, but it's probably a little bit more boring bombs is more exciting with those pistons going on overall it's going to be a three out of five an average shrine casually it does what it's supposed to do that being said we do have to talk about the shrine casual uh, speed running wise and there's a couple of things that i want to talk about there's multiple ways how you can speedrun through the shrine. In the past, we had versions where we clip through the wall, go out the other side, run to the end. There's been multiple wind bombs th uh, through the shrine, one from down here, which is pretty precise, one from up here, which looks pretty cool, honestly. Uh, I didn't actually do the timing very good here, but it still worked out. It does feel really cool to go to the shrine this way. Um, I do want to highlight one strategy that you will probably never see this uh, at this point anymore. But there used to be a strat where before we even had wind bombs where we actually used this metal block here to ride all the way to the end of the shrine. I highly doubt that I can make it work. I think it's only four hits. No, okay. I, I don't know the exact angle anymore. Essentially, the idea is that you ride the box all the way to the end of the shrine. It was pretty precise and no one really ever did it, but it was a really cool strat that I want to remember. That being said, to me, this is going to be a three out of five shrine. Um, it has some cool in-depth speedrun threads as well for speedrunning, like the canal wind bomb from down here that I never really properly learned. Uh, where essentially you do like this really precise timing to then wind bomb all the way to the end. And this is not supposed to happen because otherwise you die. Um, but it has multiple options, some of which are consistent, some of which are not super consistent. But overall, I think this is what you expect from a shrine speedrunning wise. It has multiple options, wind bombs, and it's solid. Uh, it's gonna be a 3 out of 5, nothing stand outish though. When it comes to the exterior for stasis, um, we probably have the least amount of tutorial type stuff. We have one specific thing um, that stands out, which is this block. This block kind of teaches you that, yes, you can use stasis. And in speedruns, we use it in a different way. But it shows you that, yes, you can use stasis to get objects out of the way to discover new um, items. In this case, it's a royal bow. It's only a royal bow because I already played through the entire game. Normally, this wouldn't be a royal bow. Um, but that's pretty much it. Now, there is a, uh, is a second version of Stasis later, Stasis Plus, that allows you to stasis enemies. There's no real tutorial for that specific rune. You just kind of get it and you can figure it out for yourself. Uh, obviously, it doesn't make sense that this shrine doesn't explain that yet. But I do have one issue specifically with the interior of the shrine. One thing that this, is, uh, this, this shrine doesn't explain um, but I feel like it really should. So it starts out with um, stasising this bridge, which is already a little bit tricky when you first start out playing the game. I've seen a lot of people struggle with this. Um, 
Now, this is the first thing that the rune doesn't specifically explain, which is that if you use stasis again, you actually get your cooldown in decreased. Kind of difficult to explain with just game mechanics, but this is something you figure out along the way that you don't necessarily always want your stasis timer to run out. This portion here makes a lot of sense for me. I think this is very evident that the game wants you to use stasis to basically stop the momentum of this rolling orb. I think this is a good this is a job well done. You can then again use it up there if you wanted to to um, make your way to the chest behind and get an extra shield. And this is the specific part that I have an issue with. Now, uh, the shrine actually goes out of the way, which is something I recently realized, to give you a unique prompt here. No, this prompt here, this unique hit prompt, I think shows up literally only here. The only time in the game that this hit prompt shows up. And that's fine, right? It shows you um, that you can hit this orb to use stasis to make objects fly away. Um, I think it would have been cool to include, once again, some sort of enemy in here to either show how objects interact when you stasis them into enemies or maybe later how to um, stasis enemies themselves. Also, it doesn't really show you the potential of the rune, which is something that obviously people figured out over time. Um, what I mean by this is using stasis uh, and specifically on, for example, boulders or, or chests to use that momentum yourself as Link to get to different places. That's what I'm missing a little bit. But overall, I think it's fine. I do honestly think that it's probably the most underwhelming of the tutorial shrines, mainly because this bridge section is a little bit tough Thanks for, for all the great new players, and, and the I wish content. they would have um, showed the potential of stasis a little bit more. I don't know if it's well, if it's if it's if it's fair to give the shrine a two. I think I'm gonna do it just because to make that statement that I think it is the worst of the tutorial shrines, and they had a lot of missed potential in it. Um, it's a little bit of a harsh rating. That's fair. Uh, the other ones being more average shrines. We have a lot of shrines to go over that are much better than this one. It's just slightly below average. I do want to talk about speedrunning real quick. This was probably the most boring shrine speedrunning wise for a long time. Because all we did is run through. Um, we do have a wind bomb for the shrine now, which is actually fairly consistent. Which makes this a little bit better. And there is also a unique strategy that we haven't really seen um, for a long time. Oh, we haven't really seen this jump in other shrines because later on we get the paraglider, so stuff like this is no longer needed. This is a cool strat the first time you see it, essentially jumping over or jumping past that boulder here. I remember when I first got into speedrunning, I had to teach this to a lot of people because it's a pretty confusing jump when you first start out. Obviously, nowadays we have, again, a wind bomb inside here, which is, is fine. I don't have anything particular against the shrine on a speedrun. In the past, maybe more so. This used to be the first shrine we used to do but the hatred mostly came because of getting to this shrine. This used to be the first split and we had to deal with lots of different like Bokoblin RNG and stuff, which maybe taints my opinion about it a little bit, but I think it's just only fair to say this is your average speedrunning shrine. You start, you get an extra rune, which is cool, and then you do a wind bomb and the wind bomb is relatively consistent and has an interesting enough history. I think this is going to be a three out of five. But let's move on to Cryonis. Now Cryonis casually mainly stands out for me because it's obviously quite a journey to get here in the first place. It's definitely the most challenging place to reach when you play through the Grey Plateau because at first you have to figure out how to deal with your cold uh, damage problems and then it's also really high up. There's enemies, there's like choo-choos that spawn. When it comes to the exterior, there's already again a cool little tutorial to teach you an additional way to use Cryonis. They place this wooden chest in the middle of this lake and basically show you, yes, you can lift chests out of the water with this. Again, all of these shrines kind of add an additional puzzle towards the end. The problem with Cryonis in general is that it's a very underwhelming rune throughout the game. Casually, maybe not so much, because casually you use Cryonis quite a bit to cross water. Sometimes you don't have the stamina to cross water, so building Cryonis bridges like this is something that you quite commonly do. But later on it becomes relatively useless. Uh, you can use it on waterfalls, which is something that this shrine here doesn't explain. There is a shrine later that technically goes more in depth with the concept. Um, of using Cryonis on like waterfalls or like on sideways water. I think they could have technically included this in this shrine. I think these shrines should be there to explore 
basically the entire potential of the rune, but maybe they didn't want to overwhelm players. That being said, the shrine itself, let's go through it once again. It shows that we can use Krynus to lift a blink or to basically climb on the block, because obviously you can climb on normal blocks. It shows that you can use Krynus to lift up things, like a gate. And uh, they did also include an enemy here, for example. So, and, and this is, I guess, the purpose, right? That you can use Cryonis as like a shield, which is something that people casually basically never do anymore. But it's something that you can do. I guess against Guardians, it's something that people do. I'm thinking of that Guardian in the Wetlands. That's that one time where people probably use Cryonis as kind of like a shield. Um, it shows you that you can use it to reach places that are out of your reach. And then once again, that it even has physics implications. You can use it on the left or right side and move our blocks or slaps in this case. They could have probably made it so that this area was like not accessible to kind of show you that you can make choices like that. And my main issue is that Cryonis is just not used enough later in the game and there's not en enough. In there's some puzzles later on um that make use of it but for the most part it's fine I, I, it does the job well enough and i can't give it a two so casually it's just gonna be a three out of five again like all of the plateau shrines are in stasis because i feel like there was much more potential but yeah uh, that being said speed running wise i do have a little bit to say about the shrine mainly because this unfortunately again has actually turned into one of the most boring shrines speedrunning wise. The strategy that we do here nowadays is we stand here right after getting the rune and then never use it again. We get Cryonis, we switch to bombs, and then we never use it again. Because we wind bomb up here and finish the shrine. In the past, however, there's been multiple cool different ways to complete the shrine. A strat that you barely see these days, which is like a Cryonis shield jump, where you make a cryo block, shield surf on it, unequip your shield, and then jump up just without the paraglider. Uh, but yeah, there's also been um, a... There used to be a wall jump, this one for the shrine, which is a very unique strat you don't really see. Unfortunately, because of recency bias, I think this is the weakest of the speedrunning shrines on the Great Plateau now. Um, it has the most lame wind bomb. You do also have to deal in any percent with something called Ragdoll Glitch, where you do a wind bomb right after doing a shield clip. So just how I said, Stasis was, in my opinion, just as a standout, a little bit worse than the rest tutorial, like casually. I think this is a little bit worse than the rest speedrunning wise, just because it's boring. Two out of five for speedrunning. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna be rating locations of shrines too much, um, unless they are related of get to getting the shrine out of the ground. Like if the puzzle is, the outset of the shrine is related to actually finishing the shrine, getting the spirit orb then that's gonna be different but in this case the shrine is just out here it just happens to be on one of the most useful locations in the entire game so getting this as a war point casually and even in speedruns is gonna be extremely useful because you have access to the durians to the endura carrots to enemies to the lord of the mountain to so many important locations of the game but that's not really gonna change the rating i just wanted to touch on that real quick now this shrine i remember from watching people do casual uh, casually was um, a lot of people's nightmare especially the section over there um i think this is mainly because a lot of people either didn't play with motion controls or didn't like how to play with motion controls this is what i'm saying for like the your average player there's a lot of people that played breath of the wild as their first video game in a long time of course some of you might be extreme gamers and had no issues here but i've definitely seen a couple of people struggle with this not only with the swinging section which can be quite disorienting but also with the section back there but yeah in this section i've specifically seen people struggle with um, I'm doing it with out motion controls right now, but it's just because the way Link controls in this game is relatively stiff, right? So when you like move this uh, uh, move this thing away, run away from the swing, it can super easily happen that you fall down, especially for people that are not super used to playing video games all the time, um, which I think made the experience for a lot of people in the shrine worse. That being said, mechanically, it offers a decent amount of unique puzzles. They might be a little bit more tricky for your average casual player. And I'm saying average. If you're watching this video right now and you've been following Breath of the Wild content for years, keep in mind that you're probably already not the av average casual player, but somebody that played the game much more than the average person. Um, I do think it's relatively harsh to say, just because there is a lot of... There's a lot of shrines that are worse 
Um, but there's also so many shrines that are much better. I'm basically thinking between two and three for the shrine casualty. And I think mainly of, because of this section and considering the average casual player, it's gonna be en it's gonna end up being a two for me. I wanna talk about speedrunning. Unfortunately, this shrine is one of the most inconsistent shrines uh, speedrunning wise these days. The problem with this shrine speedrunning wise is there's multiple strats like this one and it already failed. And this is the problem, right? This random these random structures on top make a lot of wind bombs in the shrine a little bit of a nightmare. There is a consistent strategy, which is very tedious and annoying for speedrunners to do. And this is going to be high level complaining, right? But that's my job as a speedrunner. Because you guys all play the game casually, but not all of you have speedrun it. Um, where you do a backflip wind bomb, which is a rarely seen strat these days. Where you get just enough height to make it to the end of the shrine. Um, that's consistent but a little bit tedious to do. That would usually push the shrine to a three or even two out of five. I will end up increasing the shrine's rating for one particular reason though. And that's the old strat for the shrine, which is you basically, like I already said, you skip this part, you get the bridge down, and then you have to remember that there used to be a time and a world where wind bombs were not a thing and it's just and flying in general wasn't really common but being able to do this back in the day before wind bombs were a thing essentially using that bridge as a catapult was a rush um, and it's something that you don't really see anymore but in all shrines this was probably my favorite strategy back then and that's why it's always going to stand out for me and will push the shrine back to a three out of five just because that strategy still exists. Um, obviously heavily biased, keep in mind this entire list is biased. But that being said, that's gonna be Moglatan. It's gonna be a 2 out of 5 casually because of some difficulties that I've seen people encounter here. And 3 out of 5 speedrunning because of its unique strategy that people used to do back in the day. We're gonna get to Kaiwan. Location, once again, not gonna play a major role here. Um, it's a shrine that's right next to the stable. There's a lot of shrines that are right next to stables in Breath of the Wild. You get to the point where once you realize you see a, a stable, you already know there's gonna be a shrine nearby. So you end up looking for them, which is, I think, a cool thing that they did. Some of the shrines next to stables were not immediately obvious. So getting conditioned to knowing that stable means there's a shrine nearby is a good idea. Now here, we actually have a waterfall, right? And we talked about this earlier. Um, being in this shrine and then being like, oh, I can use Cryonis this way, makes sense to me. Basically, an additional tutorial for the shrine. However, again, I think there wouldn't have been any hurt if that waterfall existed in Cryo, but wasn't actually needed to progress. Anyway, um, casually, you build your path up the waterfall and you encounter this guardian that you could have several ways of taking out. You can use an arrow to shoot him off. You can build a Cryonis bridge towards him and then take him out. And then you make your way to this chest if you want to. This is a repeat of what we saw in Cryonis earlier, where you can get the chest out of the ground. This is still something that people still don't know, but you can technically break these crates and get whatever is in them out of them. This is something the game never teaches you, but I guess a cool thing to figure out later. Only works on wooden chests. Now here, we see the gate again, just like we saw in Cryonis, so we should already know we can lift up these gates. But the main problem here are the guardians. You can take out the guardians, but they, the knockback that they basically give you when shooting you is very frustrating. Uh, in this case, I will be barely fine, but I almost fell off my right and actual perfect showcase. Having this happen casually is just extremely frustrating. If you, it gets even worse if you use Cryonis blocks to try and get this chest on the left. It just ends up being a frustrating, tedious experience and that pushes the shrine from just an average way of using the Cryonis ruined to slightly below average because of that frustration. And in speedrunning, unfortunately, it isn't really any better. These days we have some interesting ways to beating the shrine, but the most consistent one still uses basically the casual strat. And you still deal with these annoying guardians. I cannot tell you how many speedrunners I've seen, me included, falling down somewhere here because of these guardians. Because your resources are tight, you don't want to use arrows to take care of them. And usually in speedruns we need this chest, in long speedruns, because this chest contains an ancient core and it's needed for multiple upgrades in the game. Now there is nowadays some ways to beating the shrine more efficient, 
which include usually something like either wind bombing from here. Unfortunately, you can already see how incredibly precise your wind bomb would have to be because of how low the ceiling is. But usually the more consistent way is going to be to wind bomb up here on top and then performing a bomb slide to get to the end of the shrine. Unfortunately, there's many inconsistencies here. Uh, I, for example, didn't get a great bomb angle, wind bomb angle. So now I'm going to have to build enough speed with my slide to go over this part of the shrine hello, and then hello, barely hello. squeeze my way through. Now, in this specific instance, this doesn't even look very fast. But what this does, it allows you to bypass the guardians without having to care. And that alone actually relieves a lot of stress. A lot of runners hate it, and I would almost give it a 1 if this specific strat didn't exist. But because it does, it's also going to get a 2 out of 5. Let's talk about a good shrine, uh, at least speedrunning-wise, which is going to be Dark Hatas. Now, Dark Hatas exterior is, again, a pretty useful location in the game. There's a lot of uh, swift lotus seats around. Uh, these Lizalfos can be very frustrating. I think a lot of people know fighting Lizalfos casually is a nightmare. Um, and even once you know all of the strategies in the game, they can be quite annoying. But that's not going to really play a role here because it is not related to entering the shrine. You can technically just ignore them. For the interior, this shrine is frustrating when it comes to casual playthrough. What they want you to do is to use this metal scoop to scoop up one of these orbs. Which I actually am decent at, I say as I mess it up. Um, because we used to do this in the speedrun, there was no really good speedrun strat for this for a long time when I started playing the game. Uh, you essentially use the scoop, you get the orb over here, um, then you have to figure out that you can actually use the scoop itself for the next part of the puzzle. Is something that you don't necessarily know, and there's multiple ways to do this. You can technically now stasis the switch and then get the orb in there. You can technically use Cryonis and throw an orb in there. I think this is what the shrine shines at. I'm pretty sure no one really had the same solution casually for this. You can use metal weapons to press this button, essentially. You can use the scoop. Um, and I think that's, again, one of the ways that the, where the sh shrine shines. But I think because of the controls for Magnesis, a lot of people probably ended up having a more frustrating time in this. We'll talk more about motion control shrines later and how they're literally the worst in the game. Not because... I mean, it is a, a different approach to solving a shrine, but I think it ended up being mostly frustrating for people. That being said, I think the strength of the shrine is kind of forced people to think differently. This is a, an experience that a lot of people had when playing this game, where it's like... I actually don't know what the intended solution to the shrine was. Sometimes it seems like there was no intended solution because there's multiple things that work. Once again, here you can use weapons to throw uh, to make the button go down. You can put the scoop and then use a cryonis block and like throw the orb in, or like you can bomb the orb in. Technically, you can hit the orb in with stasis. You can stasis the button and then use the scoop again and just scoop it in. There's just multiple different ways to solve the shrine, and. I think that's uh, a strength, but all things considered, with it with there being 120 shrines and there being a lot better ones casually, I think this is going to, once again going to be a 2 out of 5 um, contender, where it's like a little bit below average, cool ideas, but execution ends up frust being frustrating most of the time. That being said, speedrunning wise, the shrine is a gold mine. It ended up being one of the coolest shrines speedrunning wise. We had multiple ways to serve the shrine. One classic one was basically to step to the right, use the square bomb, throw it, blow it up just after it goes under the water surface to perfectly catapult the orb into this cage. This is something that people always loved to see um, because it's such a precise throw. And then you ended up basically bomb boosting yourself through the water here by doing a specific jump. Now, these days we have something even better. When you first enter the shrine, what you can do is uh, you face this way, right? You can do a jump, do a jump again, but place a bomb mid-jump. We do the neutral shield jump, we blow up the bomb, and it blasts us perfectly 
under the water. Something that you'd never really see in this game. You literally go under the water, end up in the secret room where these platforms are just perfectly sticking out of the water to do another wind bomb that can then catapult us over the wall into the final room. And it's such a unique strat that this is actually going to be my first four out of five in a speedrun. Mainly just because in a speedrun you get conditioned to do enter shrine, you aim somewhere, you wind bomb, that's it. But because of that extra unique strat of going under the water with this little bomb boost combined with a wind bomb, this is going to be my first four out of five. It's not going to be one of the best speedrunning experiences, but it always does stand out. And I, I think one good way to also rate these shrines speedrunning wise is like, how cool is it to show the shrine to someone for the first time? Five out of five for speedrunning is going to be reserved to the shrines that are like, I love showing these off. There's one in particular that's going to be a very simple one that just always is a highlight uh, for me to show off. Okay, let's talk about Mia Magana. This is definitely a classic. And I think a lot of people would already give this a 1 out of 5 casually because it uses an apparatus. When we talk about casual, I'm not going to be talking about a specific cheese tray that you can do for the shrine uh, that somebody in chat is already pointing out. But normally you enter the shrine, you see that you can't go to the gate and you... This is for most people, I would say, the most uh, the first apparatus shrine unless maybe they found the one, to the Toto Sa shrine, which is like on your way there but it's very hidden i think for most people this is probably the first time they encounter this thing they examine it and they realize that they can use motion controls now this is a classic little mini game right you use motion controls to make the ball go through the maze hopefully you don't have the ball fall down there and you eventually uh, get it over to the other side. I think this is the same issue that we had in Dakar Tass, however, where a lot of people get frustrated with how motion controls work and end up not having the best experience here. Um, there is a cheese that you can maybe do casually, but I will actually count this towards the speedrunning um, rating for me because that's how I um, found it out. This is obviously, this by the way, is the most frustrating part, and this is why it's only going to be a two out of five, even though it has a unique. Um, a unique way of solving it and because of another reason that I haven't talked about yet but n n getting the maze and not getting that final jump immediately pushes the rating of the shrine down because I know so many people myself included that end up going through the maze and then um, failing at the very end and I guess it's fair we can talk about the cheese it ended up being used in the speed run so if you figure that out casually you were just an absolute mastermind uh, let me reload the shrine to talk about it it's still gonna be a two out of five just because that this strat isn't very intuitive and I'm gonna use it in the speedrunning rating because like I said I think part what part of what I think makes shrine speedrunning cool is showing people something that I haven't seen yet that ends up being efficient and, and fast but when it comes to casual I think that the, the cool idea though is hiding a chest in the maze, making it so that um, you can basically use the maze itself to be able to reach it with your paraglider. I think that's a pretty cool, unique take. Um, and I will include two for the rating, almost pushing it through the three uh, of average shrine. But all things considered, I think the frustration of the maze itself and specifically that final portion will again push it to a two. Keep in mind, we have a lot of shrines to go to. Not every shrine will be two and three. There will be four and even fives casually. Think about it yourself. Again, this is my rating anyway, but I think there's a lot of shrines that are much better and this will only be below average because of the frustration towards the end. Now let's talk about the cheese really quick. Um, this again was used in speedruns for a while and I loved showing people this for the first time because of how many people had uh, been frustrated by the motion controls here. But what you can do is you can simply turn your controller around, skip the entire maze and only do the final part. Now I personally messed it up here, but thankfully the orb almost spawns in instantly and you at least get multiple quick attempts at it. Uh, this is something we used in speedruns and it was always really cool to show off um, for people that had issues with this. But because it's obviously not really intended, unless it was, but maybe it was, I honestly, knowing the developers, maybe it was, that would push the rating high because if you found this casually, I can guarantee you that that made for a really cool experience. But I think for most players, again, we look at the average player, the frustration of the maze and that ending jump will push it only to a two. Now for speedrunning, I can't really say much. Unfortunately, 
I think this is going to be this is going to end up being a three out of uh, a, a two out of five as well for one simple reason. Um, because normally I'd say the average speedrunning shrine is simply just jumping to the right or left of this elevator and then doing a wind bump. That's just how a shrine is gonna be on average for speedrunning. And if that wind bump is consistent and is relatively fun, I think that's a fair rating to give. The only problem with this shrine in particular is that the fastest strat would have you do a square wind bump first, where you get a little bit less height and get a nicer angle to the end of the shrine. I actually ended up getting a little bit more height than I wanted here. You can get even lower angles, and that's the one issue that it actually can quite commonly happen that you don't get enough height and you end up flying against that wall. Uh, you can play it safe and use the round bomb first, but it also ends up feeling quite unoptimally. So it's not quite in that average level where it's like, okay, I'm aiming somewhere, I'm doing a wind bomb, nice shrine complete which would be a 3 out of 5, because of the specific architecture of the shrine for speedrunning nowadays is also only going to be a 2. There's going to be a lot more shrines that will be a 3. Let's move on to the next shrine. And the next shrine on my list is actually Keha Yog, the first shrine where the, ex the exterior will actually matter. Now, this is going to be a pretty biased take, and that's inevitable. Because obviously each of us played the game for the first time by themselves, probably unless they've seen a playthrough first. Um, but when I found this shrine, I ended up finding the shrine from the top of Gerudo Canyon, which is up here. And then saw this huge mural on the wall. I think this mural looks very impressive. Unfortunately, in Gerudo Canyon and Hebra, we do get foggy weather quite a lot. But when you see this first, this looks really cool. This definitely stands out, reminds you kind of like of the original Zelda dungeons. Uh, the task then, and I immediately figured this out and thought I was so smart, is to shoot an arrow against this platform. I'm briefly going to talk about speedrunning, um, which I'm obviously also going to include here. There's a cool thing in speedrunning where you aim against this arrow and it basically will guarantee with a weak bow that you still hit the platform, which is something that feels cool to show off. In speedrunning, this is only going to be um, a 2 out of 5 again, because that's all that is to the shrine. Then there's a blessing shrine waiting for you that you just run through. It's not one of those really bad shrines that I'm going to be talking about later, but that's the one thing that I can talk about for speedrunning. For casual playthrough though, and again, this is going to be a biased take. It does feel unfair to give this a 3 out of 5, but it's so biased for me because what happened for me is I found this thing, I immediately figured out this, the, the shock arrow, I felt so cool. And then the second the shrine raised out of the, or came out of the ground, I had Farosh like fly over it. And that made it super memorable for me. And even though this is just a blessing, and a relatively simple puzzle to do. For bias, bias reasons, I would probably have to put it to an average shrine. Because it's just a blessing, it's relatively simple, it doesn't stand out a lot. But because of that memory, I would push it to a 3 out of 5. I could see how most people would say this is a 1 out of 5 or a 2 out of 5 because I just need to shoot a shock arrow. But it did feel cool figuring it out and with my specific experience, this shrine does stand up, out enough to make a relatively simple blessing shrine hit the average rating. Again. I could absolutely understand when pe if people disagree. We don't need to go inside the shrine. I'm not going to be rating the rewards, by the way. This shrine has a diamond, which is nice. Um, I'm not going to be including the rewards. This is something I haven't even mentioned yet. Uh, it, when it comes to chests, I think that would be unfair. Um, obviously, would push the shrine up, but it, it, I, I'm, I can't count that. It's going to be a 3 out of 5 for me. We don't need to see the interior. It's a blessing shrine. Let's move on to Kataka. Now, Kataka is going to be a very unique shrine where... The speedrun is gonna have a unique advantage that pretty much no other shrine has. This is gonna be our first 5 out of 5 speedrunning shrine for like 16 reasons. I'm gonna talk about most of them. So, Kataka, let's start with talking about it casually. When you get here, the shrine is encased in ice. There is ice with ropes around it and you have to unfreeze it. Already a unique way to get a shrine out of the ground. I think it stands out. I think the only potential downside to this is if you play the game casually and you don't have enough fire arrows, this is a little bit frustrating. They did make it possible though to, for example, get fire arrows from these Lizalfos down here, but I think it's a unique way. Now, when we go inside the shrine, there's a lot of things to talk about. I think casually, while a little bit anxiety inducing, this was very unique and very cool. This is the shrine where you have to escort essentially an ice block through these fiery traps up to the monk. And 
it's unique. It, it's it's a puzzle that you don't really see anywhere else. I can see how some people maybe um maybe had some sort of anxiety going through that, but I think it just really stands out as a unique puzzle that was never used again combined with getting the shrine out of the ice in the first place and with a puzzle that we've never seen before i think casually this is going to be a four out of five i personally and this is going to be again my bias i prefer puzzle shrines much 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 over combat shrines like test of strength later i'm sure some people prefer the test of strength ones but there was there was i i really like this uh specifically later this part here where the fire comes from up top I ended up with a solution where I used a magnesis block to throw it up and then stasis the block to block the fire coming out of there to then go, uh, like basically go under and I felt incredibly smart. Speed running wise, we have to talk about this strat. This is probably my second, maybe first favorite strat ever to show people in a, uh, when they watch one of the wild speed runs. It's not gonna look as cool here because um, I've already solved the shrine. But what you do in a speedrun is you place this block basically right next to the stair. You use stasis, you hit the block exactly three times. You drop down, you shoot an arrow, and then you go onto the block. And what will happen, and it didn't happen here, actually it kind of did happen perfectly, even if the block doesn't end up next to the monk, it will still be in the cutscene trigger to open the gate. The door will open and you can enter. Lifting yourself up to the monk while getting the block up simultaneously and skipping the entire puzzle without even using a wind bomb. Which, back in the day, um, when wind bombs first were found, they were obviously really cool, they saved so much time, but we are at a point of this game's life cycle where cool shrine strats that are not wind bombs are really cool because wind bombs is, is what you're used to. This would already put the shrine to a five out of five, speedrunning wise, but there's a unique advantage that I briefly have to talk about and that makes Kataka stand out even more speedrunning wise. And if you've watched videos from me before, it's Kataka's unload radius, which allows us to store the cutscene for this shrine and basically enter every shrine in the game that is underground relatively conveniently because the shrine is also in a good position it has good height we can go to gerudo skipping the uh, the sansia race we can go here skipping the blood moon shrine this shrine has solved so many issues and it's just gonna be one of the most important shrines if not the most important for speedrunning history this is a five out of five that's pretty much all i have to say really cool strats super important for speedrunning history let's move on to showdown 2. now showdown 2 technically has a puzzle attached to it and even in my first casual playthrough i thought this was the biggest joke ever you go to the shrine you see there's glowing stones and you read this tablet and it's like if you seek power untold offer a shining blue stone I'm sure most people figure this out relatively quick. You break a shining blue stone, you put it on the pedestal, the shrine comes out. Um, not the trickiest way to get a shrine out, and if this was a blessing shrine, I would have been very underwhelmed. Fortunately, it's not. It's actually one of the coolest shrines, in my opinion, for casual play. The shrine itself would probably have a chance at 5 out of 5, if the puzzle outside would have been a little bit more tricky. Now what you do here casually, it's called two bombs, which gives away the second part of the shrine already. You can break this block in multiple ways and you have to activate the switch up there, where again, there's multiple ways to do it. You can technically jump up and use bomb arrows. You can throw, uh, you can put the bomb onto the pedestal like this. You unlock the second part of the puzzle where the same idea is true again, which if you want, um, oh, this is where you have to activate the switch. So this is already one way. To do this, you can use two bombs here already by blowing up the first and then the second one. You could technically also ride up the pedestal and use a bomb arrow or something like that, but this is probably the most simple way to do it. And then it gets even more convoluted here where you have these moving pistons. And this is something that people that took people a long time. It's a cool way to um, basically show the difference between a round and the square bomb. Because if you use the round bomb here, it ends up actually falling in this cage where if you use, sorry, the square bomb, where if you use the round bomb, it actually ends up going um, back and forth. You'll see it basically go back and forth here. So the idea here is basically to activate the round bomb uh, sorry, the square bomb, and then activate the round bomb when you're in here perfectly in time. 
opening the door. I think it's a very, very cool way to use the bomb rune. Super smart puzzle. And if the outside puzzle was a little bit more memorable and a little bit better, I think this would have been a 5 out of 5 casually. It's gonna be a 4 out of 5, but definitely one of the better shrines above average. For speedrunning, we had multiple ways to solve the shrine. Nowadays, it's a wind bomb that's fairly consistent. It's definitely probably the lowest 3 out of 5 I'll give because this wind bomb can be a little bit finicky because of how it works. Basically, what you do is you stand on this, you aim at the torch, you have to delay your bullet time a little bit, and I might have not done it correctly here. Yep, this was actually a good showcase. If you don't delay your bullet time here, you'll end up flying against that specific gate, which makes this a little bit on the inconsistent side, but if you do do it correctly, usually... It is consistent here. I delayed bullet time and I end up getting the perfect arc over, which does feel satisfying. And it is going to be a 3 out of 5 because it's a consistent wind bomb strat for the shrine. All right, let's talk about Sasakai. Now, Sasakai is our first test of strength we talk about. And like I already teased from my bias, and maybe some people will agree with me, it will be below average simply for being a test of strength. Um, there is a lot of test of strength in the game. But I don't like them enough, and most of them here will be below average on a 2 out of 5. The only reason that this one is gonna be a 3 out of 5 is because it's not just there, it is actually a cast quest. Talking to Cass here and figuring out that you have to shoot an arrow into the tower is a pretty cool way of getting the shrine out of the ground. I don't usually like shrines that are time-gated like this because they can feel anxiety-inducing, but eventually you'll figure it out. Um, and this one in particular, the, the riddle is basically when the sun is behind the tower, it will activate. You shoot an arrow there and the shrine comes out of the ground. And um, that's the one reason that this test of strength is a little bit better than the normal test of strength. Normally, the test of strength would be 2 out of 5 because they're boring, but you can farm them in Blood Moons to get weapons, which makes them useful in their own right. But this one in particular, because of a unique puzzle, will probably reach 3 out of 5 casual. I'm not going to rate them for being minor, major or modest test of strengths. Yes, Technically, Major Chester Strings give you the best weapons later, but they also eat most of your weapons. But yeah, now when it, when it comes to speedrunning, it's not going to be any better. Um, I'm only going to show this once for the test of strengths, but if you haven't seen it yet, basically every test of strength in speedruns is the same. You take a bomb, you place it on this side of the gate, you go over to the other side, you backflip, activate bullet time, wait until half stamina is depleted, and you fly over the test of strength, making it so that the Guardian doesn't spawn, which already saves time, obviously, you don't get the cutscene. Then you get skew on this side um, and then perform a shield clip through this pillar and that's it. That's what you do for every single test of strength in speedruns, with very few exceptions where you need a specific item from a Guardian. But it gets incredibly annoying, it gets incredibly tedious to do, and very scary. Because if you, for example, unintentionally mess up the wind bomb slightly and you fall into that hole where the Guardian spawns, you have to reload. If you mess up the clip and you get stuck in the pillar, you have to reload. Well, technically there's backups for it, but it's just not very fun to do because it's always the same. And I did say technically doing a wind bomb is your average speedrunning shrine. But I would probably give most of them a 2 out of 5 as well for speedrunning, just because of the potential issues of the shield clip. It's not fun to shield clip. Like, yes, it's fast, but it's not something that's fun to do. It's not, like I said, your average shrine where you just wind bomb and you look cool. So it's going to be a 2 out of 5 speedrunning wise as well. Now, this one would almost be a 1 out of 5, I will say, but I think 1 out of 5 is too harsh for speedrunning. I will, looking at the shrine down there, uh, reserve that rating for other, other shrines. The one reason that the shrine would be even lower is because it's time dependent um it's on a specific time of day that you have to come here which means speedrun routes have to literally revolve around getting to the shrine at the perfect time and it makes it so that you have to watch the first cutscene of the game if you ever have to uh, get the shrine technically you can enter the shrine by using a shrine coordinate warp which we talked about earlier most of the time that ends up not being worth it so you have to deal with the time of day cycle for this one pushing this even lower but it's not going to be low enough for one out of five it's going to be a two out of five and that's my thoughts for sasakai let's talk about dako chise which is the shrine next to gerudo town and also kind of the official beginning to most of the gerudo town shrines or gerudo desert shrines when it comes to puzzle solving shrines a lot of the shrines in this area are obviously revolving around electricity and i personally like them in my casual playthrough 
Like I said, I vastly preferred puzzle shrines to test of strengths. I know a lot of people that don't like puzzles, again, which is why this list will inherently be very biased. But let's talk about the shrine. Not about the exterior, even though it's basically acting as our war point for Gerudo Town, but it's not related to getting the spirit of out of the ground. So this is a tricky one. You essentially end up connecting these wires by pushing around magnesis boxes. You gain more puzzle parts to connect other electronical wires and eventually end up opening the door by moving these blocks in a clever way. And for me, this is an above average four out of five shrine casually because it uses very unique problem solving by moving around these blocks, gaining new tools to be able to figure out new combinations, getting the chest eventually in an even different way. And I felt really smart during the shrine and all shrines considered this is gonna be above average for me, four out of five. Now, this, however, is the exact perfect average speedrunning shrine. You get into the shrine, you go over here, you win bomb and you're done. And this is pretty much what I'm gonna be considering the average speedrunning shrine. A consistent, fast strat that just works, which feels relatively satisfying to get even after speedrunning the game for a long time. This is, in my opinion, almost the perfect showcase. We'll, we'll get some other ones later of a normal 3 out of 5 speedrunning shrine. No issues, quick wind bomb, you're done. No questions asked. You can technically improve your angle a little bit by doing a square bomb first again, but those are... It's not like uh, the Mia Magana shrine we talked about earlier. This is a perfect showcase of a 3 out of 5 speedrunning shrine. There's not too much to say about this, other than the fact that casually I enjoyed it more than the average shrine because I think it had a unique way of approaching a puzzle. 4 out of 5 casual, 3 out of 5 speedrun. Let's move on to Dark Hotar, and this one is gonna be the first 1 out of 5 speedrunning shrine. If you know, you know. If you speedrun the game, you, you know. Most recently we have a relatively consistent strat for it, but let's again start with our casual experience where this shrine um, does stand out. Again, it's an electronic-based shrine, like most of the puzzle shrines in Gerudo Desert, and it's massive. It's one of the biggest shrines in the game. Not quite like one we'll talk about later, but it's definitely up there. Your task is essentially to take this metal orb, bring it up the elevator, uh, go through the shrine with it, and I do like this one. This is already going to be a 4 out of 5 guaranteed, just because it's it feels closer to a dungeon than a shrine. Here, for example, your task is to take this uh, metal orb, but leave it close to um, the actual connector like this. Because otherwise, like you see, the elevator doesn't move anymore. And then you take it through the entire shrine, essentially. Um, I can definitely see how people dislike the shrine because they don't like puzzle shrines, right? Again, this is where the bias comes in. I liked puzzle shrines personally, so I'm going to be rating this 4 out of 5 because I think it was above average. Uh, here, the same thing. You basically leave it close to the elevator. You can get the chest if you want to. Uh, then you go through this parkour of guardians, blah, blah, blah. You bring it uh, to the end of the shrine. I like this one a lot casually, but speed running wise, this is a 1 out of 5. This shrine is literally cursed. I cannot tell you how many speedrunners have lost minutes in this shrine by their strats randomly not working. Now what we used to do in the past is we essentially went onto this pedestal um, of the elevator, aimed like at this eye around-ish, wind bomb, and then hoped for the very best. Because sometimes this would happen. And I actually got it. Seems like a cool shrine. Wind bomb at the shrine is over. Do this 10 more times, and this will work like three, maybe four times. And then some runs, you would do this, and it wouldn't work like eight times in a row. You would constantly do the same thing. And the reason this is happening is because of Ragdoll Anji. Essentially, the way the strat works is you wind bomb and you hit yourself against this gate, and then you hopefully get an angle. Here, I didn't, where I actually fall to the monk. This is incredibly frustrating. Now, most recently, we have uh, found a strat. Ikurapan, a Japanese 100% runner, I think has first popularized it, which is pretty unique, where essentially you do a turn wind bomb like this, but you turn before you place the second bomb, and you get this sort of angle here that gets you just the right height most of the time to make it to the end. Unfortunately, I still can't call this consistent. Um, many times your turn is slightly off, your bomb placement is slightly off, and you end up hitting the ceiling and lose a lot of time. But if you do get it right, it feels a little bit better, but this is just so cursed and has such a history of being a huge timeless shrine that this is definitely my first one out of five. 
for speedrunning for that particular reason. But let's move on to Kano. We have a lot more shrines to go through. I actually vividly remember finding the shrine in my casual playthrough because at this point I was already conditioned to expect that a lot of these shrines will be electronic based and I personally like them. I think this one though is a little bit less interesting than the other ones. So this might end up being a high 3 out of 5 for me, but not quite super standout-ish. It's one of the few shrines that ends up having a, a little key inside them, which is an item that you find in very few shrines in the game. You take this orb, you place it on here, and then and you can see I already solved the shrine, but usually this gate is closed. Uh, there is multiple ways to do this. You can technically uh, take one of the orbs. No, sorry, you actually grab the orb from over here to place it on here to make this uh, block fall down. You can also use stasis, hit it one time and skip that part entirely by just walking over the block, grabbing the key and then going back, opening the door. And then you get to the end part of the shrine and... Uh, use magnesis and electronics a little bit more. It's gonna be a 3 out of 5. It doesn't it doesn't feel as unique than the other electronic based puzzles that we've seen so far. You use magnesis here and that's pretty much it. Um, but I still preferred to test the strengths, etc. I talked about this many times now. Um, Speedrunning wise, this is only a 2 out of 5. It's not quite as bad as the shrine we just talked about, but this is basically a coin flip. You stand here and you do a wind bomb and you try to do it as fast as possible and there's two outcomes. There's this outcome where you get to the end portion of the shrine and just do the final part of the puzzle. But there's also quite a big chance where if you do something slightly wrong, you end up bouncing against this wall. You have to go to the left, get the key anyway and finish the shrine, losing 20 seconds. It feels bad and it will matter for the speedrunning rating of the shrine. Ends up being a 2 out of 5. But let's move on to G. No. In the past, this would probably be the worst. This would probably be my least favorite shrine in the past for speedruns. If you've done speedrunning in like 2018, 2019, this was the worst shrine. Oh my god. But again, let's talk about uh, the shrine casually first. So here we start out by using bone arrow to shoot this orb. And then for the rest of the shrine, you essentially move. Uh, here is the same thing, right? You shoot the orb into the opening again. And then later on, there's these like conveyor belts that you stand on while holding the orb, maneuver around boxes. It is a unique shrine, I'll give it that. It is not a test of strength, but it will only be a 3 out of 5 for me because of, again, my issue is Link's movement in this game casually. The way he moves like around stiff like this. It can be so easy to unintentionally walk into one of the lasers. Basically, walking around these conveyor belts while holding the orb with Link's stiff movement, it can be super easy to like misstep once and then lose your orb and lose all of your progress. Um, one thing that I will show you that I feel like a lot of people didn't know casually is that you can actually stasis these lasers. I don't think this is ever really explained to you, but it's something you can do. And that can help a little bit, but still, like already being on the conveyor belt uh, together with Link's like stiff movement, I think made this unfortunate casually, but because it is unique and it has a bunch of different ways to solve puzzles, this will still be a three out of five for me, liking um, these sort of puzzles. Now, when it comes to speedrunning, there is a couple things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about the first strat that people used, which was absolutely awful. I want to talk about the second strat that people used, which is one of the coolest strats ever. And then I will explain you why it's simply a three out of five normal wind bomb shrine these days, uh, which you could already basically see. So back in the day, we would actually climb up this side of the shrine and then try to jump, shield jump, bomb bounce from the side of it. So the way this would work is you would like walk here and I failed. And this would happen all the time because of how annoying this slope is to jump off. Again, let's try it again. Again, I didn't get the jump. And this is how it literally looked like. I remember watching some of the original old shrines runners fall here like 10 times because you would hopefully get the jump I did get it, but I didn't get the shield jump, so I still didn't make it. 
The idea is basically that you jump, shield jump, then you bomb link and you end up landing on that part of the shrine. And then from there, you had to bomb boost yourself up again. I don't know if I'm even going to be able to make it here once. Pr doesn't look like it. I, I feel like I don't want to force it. Just trust me. It used to be absolutely awful. That being said, one of the coolest strats ever ended up being the second strat for the shrine. I don't know if I'd be able to uh, do this one either, but this was actually found just before wind bombs were found. You would take this orb, get it over um, to this part. You would remove it again, place it here, place a bomb inside this hole, place the shrine orb itself on top of the bomb. Now the problem here is that you have to basically line it up perfectly, kind of like this. Backflip and then blow up the bomb. And this was how the shrine was solved before wind bombs were a thing. It's a very unique strat that back then was mind-blowing. Um, nowadays, not so much anymore because it's essentially just an original wind bomb using an orb and a bomb instead of two bombs. Uh, but I just wanted to briefly talk about the history from one of the worst shrines to one of the coolest to nowadays, no big surprise, the way you solve the shrine is you walk up and you wind bomb from here to the end. Being up, ended, ending up just being a normal 3 out of 5. But I think it had an interesting enough history to talk about. And that's gonna be it. For Gino, let's move on to Dark Castle. Now, Dark Castle is another test of strength and a very average one at that, which you can already tell it's going to end up just being a 2 out of 5. Like I said, I'm not going to be going into every single test of strength. It's under this um, the suspension bridge here. It's a minor test of strength. The one thing that stands out for me as a memory is that how late I found this shrine for it being so close to the plateau. The plateau is just up here, but it took me so long to actually find the shrine that is one memory I have to it. I already showed you the speedrunning strats for the test of strengths. I already said they're going to be two out of five casually for me because I didn't really enjoy them, but at least they give you some loot. And that's all I can say. Dark Castle, two out of five. Let's move on to Yoluna. And this one is an interesting one because it starts out by being underground. Now, casually, this shrine would be set up to be a great shrine if it wasn't for one particular thing. That makes the shrine so, so much worse. But let's start out with the puzzle. It's obviously a lovely puzzle. Um, you talk to these Gorons. You do the test of will. Where there's uh, multiple ways to approach it. You can technically just stand on the platform. And take the damage by getting a bunch of food. You can technically drink an elixir. There's the strat where once you catch on fire. Which I wouldn't really call this casual. This is also what we did in speedruns. Once you catch on fire. You do a spin attack to make sure that you're not burning anymore. And eventually the shrine will come up the ground. It's memorable. It has a cool soundtrack. And it would be a plus point for the shrine. Pushing it above average if it wasn't for one one particular thing. It's a motion control puzzle. Uh, this part here, you can basically just turn your controller around until eventually all of these parts will be electrified. In the speedrun, what you do is you can simply shoot a shock arrow against one of them, which is going to be enough to light up the entire block which is going to be an uh, upside in the speedrun. Now here, there's uh, again different ways to solve uh, this, you can technically take the metal block and put it over onto this block to make the fan kind of like rise out of the ground. Again, I'll show you the speedrun way to do this here. You can technically wall clip, but what you can also do is you can place this block in a very precise posi position where you basically hit all four of the fans without using the block or the button on the right side at all. And now this is what makes the shrine probably a 1 out of 5, casually. I cannot tell you how frustrating this was to do. I think it's a 1 out of 5, casually. This was set up to be like a 4 out of 5, above average, memorable experience, if it wasn't for this part. So what you have to do here is you have to basically take this block and like light these torches on fire and sure there are some cool ways where you can like press this block and the water sprouts will change in heights and yeah big brain blah 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 but at the end of the day it required you to use motion control so precisely that you never unintentionally do this where the water sprout hits the torch and goes i i cannot tell you 
how hard I raged here at times until I eventually lit all of these torches up. Now, one thing that you can do, and this is not something you do casually, is you can technically get these torches in like this sort of position and then use fire arrows to light them all up. Sure, maybe you thought of this casually and your big brain, you're better than me. I get it, I get it. And then maybe it wasn't as bad, but because most people don't do this, I think casually this is just for me a one out of five. I was extremely frustrated with this. Uh, for speedrunning, this will be a 2 out of 5. Um, it feels kind of cool to do this part of the puzzle and the first part um, where you shoot the electric um, things and you end up just doing a wind bomb here. Unfortunately, it just takes too long. It's not a very speedrun friendly shrine. Um, not this part in particular, but uh, the part of the puzzle. It, it's kind of like a little bit of a breather. Um, but for two reasons, uh, it's going to be a 2 out of 5. It takes too long. And as cool as this part, you just saw the door close again. As cool as this part is to do, it can also be pretty finicky and be a frustrating time loss. So speedrunning 2 out of 5, casual 1 out of 5, just because of this part. Um, unfortunately. Apparatus Shrines will get pretty low ratings for me casually. Maybe some people really enjoyed them. Maybe people are more patient than me and more have like more control. Um, but for me, that's what it's going to be. Let's move on. We're going back towards north. Shababu is already out of the ground. It's right next to the flight range, so there's not too much to talk about here. But this shrine does play relatively well. Uh, there's one specific issue I have with it that's very specific, but let's go through it. You just glide up these wind gusts and it's all fun and games, but there's one particular section, which is the one that's coming up here, where you are... Um, well, I guess you can land on this platform, which is, I guess, what you're supposed to do. But if you're trying to just touch the ladder from mid-air, sometimes it can be relatively easy to fall down, which is going to be a small gripe for me, which is something that happens all the time because we used to do the strat, basically casual strat, but fast in the speedrun. And then this part here is one of those cool aha effects, I think, where people get stuck and they're like, uh, but like that's not high enough and like how do i get over there until you eventually figure out that there's another wind gust inside i think that was a memorable moment for me pushing the shrine still to a three out of five average shrine with this cool aha effect here that's why even with the small grab with the ladder it's gonna be three, three out of five it's not quite enough for four out of five for me because at the end of the day you just glide up it's relatively short now speed running here is interesting uh, because, like I said, we used to just do the casual way of going through the shrine. But nowadays, we do something closer to this. We essentially do one wind bomb. And like I said, if this was it, this would be your classical three out of four shrine. Three out of, three out of five shrine. But what you want to do now is you want to do another wind bomb mid-air. And this is the reason what you saw happen there. That it's... <sighs> It's hard, because this shrine feels incredible if you get it, but it's very easy to not get enough height with this mid-air. Because the idea is that you do the mid-air wind bomb and you go all the way to the end. And it's like, it would be like, oh, this is a 4 out of 5, this is pretty cool speedrunning wise, if it was, was actually consistent. But it just isn't. And before I have rated shrines that are inconsistent and tend to be frustrating in speedruns as a 2 out of 5 and I think I'm gonna have to continue with this trend. As cool as it feels to get this right, I think you just don't get it right consistently enough. I think it's just fair to give this a 2 out of 5 as well because let's see it again, maybe I'll get it this time. I do, right? And now it's like, wow, sick, what, a, what a cool shrine. But uh, the frustration of failing it and then somehow backing it up and going the casual way We'll push this down. I think this is how I'm going to be rating uh, these shrines for speedrunning if they're too inconsistent and frustrating. Now, for the next shrine, I do want to show out the outside, show off the outside a little bit because even though the shrine is technically out of the ground, it's very hidden. And some of you already know this, but this is actually my favorite shrine in the game, casually, because of its location. It's Hebra. You can't see much. Maybe you're gliding around and then you see these suspicious torches you find this entrance, you're like, oh, what's happening here? There's, there's a wind gust in here. Okay, there's more torches, water, very suspicious. Reminds me kind of like a, of a dungeon. Then you go through this like hidden water passageway, more torches around, and then you find the shrine. And I think this feels really cool. You would almost expect a blessing shrine here because there's blessing shrines that are hidden just like this that only give you a blessing. But instead, you get one of the biggest shrines in the game with 
multiple unique puzzles really making you feel like a little bit like the original Zelda dungeons. You start off by lighting these torches. There's like guardians. There's these like hidden traps of like uh, this like orb that rolls down. Um, I think it's a really, really memorable shrine and casually for me, this just stands out as a 5 out of 5 um, for being lots of cool puzzles, really cool location. There's like these, this trap again of this orb falling down. This part you can like, you jump over. Uh, what I mean is like here you get like a little bit of a combat challenge. It doesn't feel quite like a test of strength. Uh, also don't get confused about the fact that I have 900 ancient arrows. This is a speedrunning file that I used um, yesterday. And you walk up to them and you're like, huh, what do I do? Boom. Memorable moment. I'm sure some people died to this and were upset, but I thought this was a fun moment. This is a f was a 5 out of 5 casual experience for me, and I do look back to the shrine fondly. Um, Speedrunning Makara. This would normally be a 3 out of 5 if it was just a wind pump to the end, but this wind pump is just so, so satisfying to do that it will be a 4 out of 5 speedrunning wise as well. As well. It's not like a top speedrunning shrine, but just look at it. It just feels so perfect. The way you like perfectly fly up to this. There's gonna be only one shrine where wind bombing feels even better, which will also be a 4 out of 5, but it just feels great. Makara, 4 out of 5 speedrunning. That's all I have to say about the shrine. Let's move on to Monzo Shano. Now, Monzo Shano is another test of strength, and I'm not gonna go inside because it's the same thing. This is a major test of strength, which some people might like. I don't. It's pretty well hidden, and it's also part of a shrine quest. Um, usually, for speedrunning, I would almost have to rate how incredibly frustrating it is to reach the shrine. Usually, you go from down here all the way up here, but I won't. Um, I will do the normal stuff here for these. It's gonna be a 2 out of 5, casually and speedrunning-wise. I would almost like to give the shrine a 1 out of 5 speedrunning wise of, because of how bad it is to get here. And maybe I will. Because at the end of the day, this is my list. And if you're a Breath of the Wild speedrunner, there's a pretty high chance that you'll hate this shrine. Especially if you play all shrines or categories that get here from the bottom, like down here. It, it, it just it probably killed one or two of your runs. And because it's my list, it's actually going to be a 1 out of 5 speedrunning. Because it's so annoying to get here and then it's a normal test of strength. But again, casually, 2 out of 5, below average. Not a big test of strength fan. That's all I have to say about Monster Shadow. Yes, there's a shrine quest attached to it, but that's it. Let's move on to Shadano. Um, Shadano is at the pretty much the peak of Hebra. It's right next to Salmi Spot, where there's a pretty cool shield surfing mini game, and I like it quite a bit when it comes to casual play. So let's go inside. It's a normal classical puzzle shrine. It is pretty similar to Rin Uya. You essentially build a little track for this orb to roll around in the wind gusts. Uh, Rin Uya is a, a shrine I made a video about 50 ways to be the shrine in Breath of the Wild. And these shrines usually end up having some unique ways to solve it, which is going to push this to a 4 out of 5 to me. These shrines just make me want to think of cool ways to beat the shrine. So normally you can build the track, have the bowl roll, roll, roll around. You can put the orb here, use stasis to get it in. You can build a bridge with the magnesis block. You can use the magnesis block to throw it into the orb to make the orb fly over. You can use a BLSS. You, uh, which I guess is a speedrunning strat. You can use a coral cleave. You, you can do like so many ways to solve the shrine, which is, is like a nice, it's a nice showcase of the creativity that you get in Breath of the Wild. And this is why this is a memorable puzzle shrine to me. This is the sort of shrine where there's a very low chance that you and your friend solved it the same way, exact same way. And this is why I think it's cool and why casually it stands out. Now for speedrunning, this is the exact showcase I talked about earlier. This is the absolutely most normal three out of five uh, average speedrunning shrine. You do a wind bomb, you're done, boom. And that's shot or no. Now Rogovok is pretty well hidden, actually. Obviously not really part of uh, getting the spirit orb. Not to the same extent that Makara is. Now, in here, we find a relatively uh, big puzzle. Now, I, there's one specific thing that stands out to me um, when I played the shrine casually. These are relatively basic puzzles, right? You use bombs to break crates. There's some guardians you can fight. But the one thing that does stand out for me is this specific room where you can either use a fire arrow to burn down the barrels. Technically, you can throw a bomb in like a specific location to uh, cover the button. And that was one thing that was memorable for me. You get a key, you open the door, you're done. 
It's gonna be a high 3 out of 5. It's a basic puzzle shrine with one memorable moment. It's not enough to be a 4 out of 5. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Like, it's not 2 out of 5 because it's not just a strength, but it's not really 4 out of 5 material. It's okay. It's alright. It's average. Stands out for that one moment. Now, speedrunning once again. We talked about this. 3 out of 5 shrine. You wind bump. You're at the end. Uh, this used to be one of the longest shrines speedrunning wise before wind bombs. I will maybe mention when it comes to the history. Uh, it used to be quite annoying, but uh, because this is a video about now, it's gotta be a 3 out of 5. Easy wind pump. Satisfying enough. Shrine is done. Let's move on to Sha Gemma. Now, Sha Gemma is a relatively compact shrine, and I really like those. I like when a shrine is pretty compact, but still has interesting problem solving. There will be one that I will rate much higher than this, because the thinking here was uh, cool. But there is something you can do. We actually do this in speedruns to this day. And this is literally what I did casually. Now, you get into the shrine and the idea here is that you take this orb, you basically move around as you use Magnesis. And then at the very top, once you reach this uh, parkour or whatever, um, you can technically place it onto these platforms for a second and then easily reach the key that's under the block. What I did, and what people still do in speedruns, is you walk up here, you use Magnesis, you use Stasis. You get the key, you go through the door, you're done. This works in speedruns, this works casually. I think the idea for um, casual was there. It was unique, it was compact, but honestly, because this, this exists, I don't even think I can give this one an average rating. There's too many better, there's too many shrines that are better. I think this is going to be a 2 out of 5 either way. For speedrunning, it's just boring, right? Because you do the same thing. You lift the block, you open the chest, you're done. People are already saying they don't remember the shrine because it is kind of forgettable. It's like just below average. It's not awful or whatever. They had, an, I guess, a good idea, but it just ended up being whatever. Now let's move to a shrine that will have a drastically different rating for speedruns um, than they have casually. And those are going to be um, our maze shrines. The first one, Kazatoki. All of the mazes, in my opinion, while maybe frustrating, are very memorable experiences casually. I think... I guess this depends on how much you like mazes. Some people probably hated them because they couldn't find them. But I think over time, I have to rate every single maze 5 out of 5 casually, just because they're the closest in the game we have to like a dungeon. Um, if you don't like mazes, if you don't like dungeons, obviously you didn't like this casually. But I think they're all so memorable, all three mazes, even though in my opinion, by the way, the one in the desert was the hardest, um, which some people might disagree with but that confused me the most. They are all super memorable shrines. And not only that, they also, and I, okay, okay, I, I will say it, but I can't have it count for the rating. The rewards are super useful. Uh, the attack up armor, but I said rewards don't count. So casually, I can already say all mazes will be five out of five. Um, speed running wise, all mazes will be three out of five. And the reason why is because they are all solved the same. You enter them from above. This one you actually enter from like above and you enter basically there and you just do the blessing. So it's similar to how um, a normal speedrunning shrine would be. Actually, there's maybe one potential um, exception that I'll talk about when we get to our color. Five out of five casual experience really stands out for all of the mazes and speedrunning is you wind bump in, you enter from the top. People that see it for the first time are like, oh, wow, that's, that was easy. Um, and it's relatively satisfying to do. Obviously, the shrine itself is just a blessing. Now, I will actually enter the next shrine like this because the next shrine is Keto Vavai. I think this will be a very polarizing shrine, but the way you normally enter is not the way I'm doing it right now by doing a BLSS. This is what we do in speedruns. But normally you enter this dark forest and it gets scary. And just like the maze, this is definitely a memorable experience. I do think this is worse than a maze just because it's scarier, it's harder to maneuver and it can be more frustrating, which is why even though this is such a memorable shrine, I will only give this a, a 4 out of 5 instead. It is a memorable shrine, but it's a bit freaky. You fight the Hinox in the dark. I casually literally found the Hinox right away and actually stole his orb, just like you do in speedruns now. I was literally just going to say this. In speedruns, what you do is you get on top of the Hinox, you steal the orb, and put it into the pedestal and finish the shrine. And that's pretty satisfying to do. 
But at the end of the day, that's only going to be a 3 out of 5 as well. Uh, the Hinox is still here, as you can see, even though I just recently did the shrine in my speedrun. But yeah, this is only going to be a um, 3 out of 5 again. It feels similar to the maze. It feels nice to be able to cheese it and to show people off. But just because, again, this feels more dungeon-esque than your average Breath of the Wild shrine and is a member of the experience casually, this will be a 4 out of 5. But not quite maze level because I think it's more frustrating. Now there's a couple tricks you can do. You can technically obviously use a torch. You can even use runes, especially like stasis to light up your environment a little bit. Daruk's protection is actually a surprisingly good source of light when you maneuver through this. But again, I think if I had more frustration with this casually, I would have probably rated this lower. But to me, because I had this cool moment where I found the Hinox right away, and just because it's a memorable location, it's gonna be a 4 out of 5. Again, this is just a blessing, so no reason to go inside. Moving on to Dao Nai. Now, Dao Nai is in a cool spot. It's hidden behind a waterfall, which I would almost rank um, to finding the spirit orb in the first place because it's really well hidden. But the Sheikah sensor made it relatively easy to find. Once you are cl nose close to the waterfall, eventually you will check behind it and you'll find the shrine. So it will actually not be included into the rating, but I guess that's worth to say. When it comes to casual playthrough in general, this is another one of these more compact shrines. The way you solve it is by essentially pressing the button, uh, using the metal boxes in a clever way from here. This this was pretty satisfying to do casually. I would probably give this a four or five just because just being in here, I remember feeling really smart. It's gonna it might just be a three. I think it's just a three. It's not yeah, it's not big enough. But th this moment where you essentially stand on here, then place the metal block onto the elevator, then go onto the metal block, it just makes you feel so smart. I I really just enjoyed that a lot. In speedrunning, this is actually a two out of five shrine for the same reason we talked about earlier. There is a wind bomb for it, but it can be really frustrating. Even if you do the wind bomb correctly, something can happen with the ragdoll RNG, like this even, where you get to hit the ceiling too much, or you land on the other side, but you still roll off. There's a really cool uh, strat from the past, though, that I want to talk about, that you can use as a backup. I love showing this one off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it first try, though. Okay, barely was able to do so. You essentially... Cryo serve up, jump, unequip your shield, place a bomb behind, use the bomb to blast yourself up here, and then finish the shrine. And it's a really cool backup to show off, which honestly will push this back to a 3 out of 5. 3 out of 5 casually and speedrunning wise. Because even if you fail the wind bomb, you get to show off the cool backup. Let's move on to Ruko Mark. Now, for Ruko Mark, it's, uh, I guess, relatively fair to say that the exterior somehow matters for getting the spirit orb. There's this maze here filled with a bunch of Lazalfos. There's really strong wind around this area if you try to cheese your way into here which you can technically bypass by opening and closing your paraglider but i guess it's fair to say there's a little bit of extra puzzle outside the shrine unfortunately that's not gonna make the interior too much better this is basically a easy version of the motion control puzzle we talked about earlier it, it makes it much more bearable basically you use these controls instead to rotate the block the right way to avoid this water sprout. Now, one thing that, again, most people probably don't know is that you can actually stasis this water sprout, which can, which can help you solving the puzzle a little bit easier. But, and again, you can also use fire arrows, which is something that people casually probably didn't do. It is a unique puzzle. It's a better version, in my opinion, of the motion control one, but there's not too much to it. It's basically this puzzle and you're done. Now, again, there actually are some pretty cool strats here when it comes to speedrunning. Nowadays, it's a three out of five shrine because you simply go over here, you can do any sort of wind bomb and enter the shrine. But I do briefly want to talk about the fact back then what we used to do is there used to be a strat where you literally like you jump into the block and I don't even know if I'll still be able to do this. Oh, no, I didn't even do it the right way. Essentially, you, sh you shoot the block. This is again a time before wind bombs. You do it like this, right? And that's what you do. It's a 3 out of 5 for speedruns. And it's probably going to be a 3 out of 5 casually. It's quite simple. It's a better way of um, the motion control puzzle we talked about earlier. But it's not enough for a 4 out of 5. This is a classic 3 out of 5 shrine. Even if the extra little maze outside. But let's move on to Nisioma, which is actually a shrine that appears all the time in uh, montages of people playing the game casually, so I have a little bit to say about this. So recently I've been watching Jarma, um, a Twitch streamer, play through Breath of the Wild, and this shrine once again appeared in this montage. It seems to be, it seems to be showing up quite a bit 
because it's actually a pretty unique puzzle. So you start out by entering here and all of these orbs start falling down. It's kind of like one of these like children's puzzles. And then there's multiple ways to solve this. You can build yourself a little track with Cryonis. You can essentially, if you want to, just stasis an orb and kick it into uh, the end there, which is actually, I think, what I did um, in my casual playthrough, which is a thing that many people try before they start like building a track, because obviously it works. I can already give away that in speedrunning, big surprise, you do a simple wind bomb over there. So again, I'm going to be rating this with three out of five. This is what you expect from an average speedrunning shrine. In the past, we had some interesting strategies here that involved shield clips, which are not one of my favorite strategies to do. But um, again, for casual playthrough, I think people have a lot of fun in this shrine. Once again, I think this appears all the time when I watch people play this game casually for the first time. Let it be people running into these orbs and falling all the way back down, um, messing up that stasis threat at the end. Um, and again, another way is to build a little bit of a track with Cryonis then start pushing this orb and basically guided through the shrine. I think this is a cool shrine that appears all the time. Um, a memorable one that people remember either for having fun or for being really frustrated that their stasis thread didn't work out at the end. And I think this is why this is actually gonna be a four or five for me. The number one fail I think that happens here is people stasis the ball. They charge it up. They're like, oh my God, I'm gonna do it. And then like another orb rolls in and pushes it away at the very end. Um, that's a classic, but I've also seen it the other way where people We're gonna mess it up and then the the ball that rolls in like saves them last second I think a memorable shrine um, Three out of five speed running because it's just what you expect and uh, It keeps showing up in people's casual playthroughs. So I think this is a good example of four out of five This is another one that I feel like I see a lot of people do for some reason I seem to be tuning in to a lot of people's casual playthrough when they do this next shrine and this shrine is Daga key and usually when I see people do this, the shrine is not there and it's gonna look something like this. They see this pedestal and the first thing they do is they're like, oh, there's a waterfall. Let me like equip this and then I'm gonna swim up. They equip the, the Zora trident and then they do like this. And then they die. That's what I see people do most of the time. I, I guess it makes sense because the waterfall is right there but technically all you need to do to do the shrine is you can do a cryo block and then do um well this doesn't work because you actually need to open your glider to get into the right plunge attack state like this and you can get the shrine out of the ground um i i see people fail this all the time and get frustrated here i think just because of this it's a memorable experience no matter if you failed here or not it does feel cool to eventually hit that plunge attack and then it's just a blessing shrine right which obviously is not gonna do the shrine rating any good i think just because it's a unique way to get the shrine out of the ground and i feel like i've seen so many fun moments this is still a three out of five despite being a blessing shrine one thing that people don't know is um a lot of people do at this point is that you don't need to use the dungeon weapon you can technically use one of the weapons that's like under the water here for speedrunning, this is actually really satisfying to do. It's really satisfying to get a wind bomb from usually down in Zora's domain and then glide over here and hit that plunge attack. Obviously afterwards, it's just a blessing shrine. But the plunge attack alone and getting like the perfect plunge attack from a wind bomb in a speedrun is so satisfying that it will still be a 3 out of 5, but I can't give it any higher no matter how satisfying the plunge attack is but if you've done this before you wind bombed here perfect plunge attack out of the wind bomb it feels nice in general these shrines are a little bit annoying speedruns because you wait for like 28 seconds for the shrine to rise up but i think it still feels fast enough and the plunge attack feels satisfying it's a good shrine i, I like the shrine and speedruns that's what i can say but i can't give it like a four out of five because it's not that special let's move on to metza low now this is one of the more rare combinations where we have an outside puzzle combined with an actual shrine that's not just a blessing or a test of strength and this one is a cuss quest shrine so we got cuss uh, usually standing right next to the shrine i've already completed it so he isn't here and he tells you about the crowned beast which is a deer now casually this can be frustrating if you don't have like speed food if you're not exactly aware of the mechanics of like taming a deer by first using frost arrows or shock arrows this can be annoying getting the deer 
and then actually getting to tame it, especially because you can reach this location relatively early into the game when your stamina isn't very high. And once you finally get the deer, you might not be able to tame it, it runs away, it ends up being an extremely frustrating thing, so... Uh, here, I have speed food. Um, I actually don't have speed food, but once I do have speed food, it's relatively easy to catch up with the deer. And then if you mash really fast, you should be able to tame it relatively easily. But I think this can lead to quite a bit of frustration casually. In speedruns, you approach the deer from a wind bomb, so it's very easy to do. A deer can be a little bit annoying to control, like sometimes it won't run right away. But uh, it also has to be a stack, that's true. It has to be a stack uh, because it's the crowned beast, which could also lead to frustration. Maybe you tame the wrong deer if you didn't get the quest quite right. But if you do get the stack, Onto the pedestal, the shrine will spawn. And I think it's a downside casually that the taming can be a little bit frustrating. One thing that makes me so mad is that you can't register stacks to be your actual mount because they look so cool, but um, it is what it is. Let's go inside. I think so far it's too early to give a rating because I do like the interior of the shrine, which um, is again one of those relatively compact shrines that also makes you feel relatively smart. You essentially have like this, 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 this rotating block Every time this switch here gets hit, uh, apparently I can't grab magnesis. Every time the switch here gets hit, the um, the middle part rotates. Again, what I like about the shrine is that using all of your tools casually, there's so many ways to beat it. Once again, we can use the quote-unquote hidden mechanic of stasising the block. Um, not the block, sorry of stasising the laser to basically get a free hit in. This is something that I'm assuming most people didn't do casually. Uh, there's different ways to do this. Obviously, you can use the block itself to interrupt the laser. You can shoot um, the crystal over there to um, make it rotate. The idea here is basically that you get the block over there and then you keep rotating the platform um, until you actually get to enter the shrine. Speedrunning wise, I can already give this away. This is a simple wind bomb. You start out here. It would get a little bit of minus points because there is a world where you aim slightly wrong and exactly this happens. Um, I aimed a little bit too far left and I missed the cage, which can be frustrating. Um, and that coupled with the um, a little bit of extra time of getting the deer would almost push this into 2 out of 5 category. But because, again, 2 out of 5 and 1 out of 5 ratings for me are mainly exclusive to tests of strengths and shrines that I really dislike, this will be a 3 out of 5 speedrunning wise. And despite the potential frustrations on the exterior with the deer, I think this puzzle is pretty cool and will probably be the sort of thing where people have solved it in different ways by either using arrows, metal blocks or stasis. I like these shrines a lot because they... Um, make for a fun discussion if you talk with your friends, yo, how did you do this shrine? It can be really cool to find out the different ways that people have actually solved it. Um, again, unfortunately a little frustrating outside, so this is only going to be an average shrine, but it will be just that 3 out of 5 across the board. Let's move on to Nami Chaos. It has a cool name, I think. Uh, that's not going to be part of the rating. I think Nami Chaos sounds um, quite cool. It's probably the Oz that really does it. Gives it this magical ring to it. Um, but that being said, it's a modest test of strength. In speedruns, it stands out a little bit because it actually has a very nice combination. You get a ancient battle axe from the Guardian and a frost spear in the chest behind, which happens to be perfect for the weapon connoisseur quest. Unfortunately, that again won't be actually playing any role for the rating. Um, that being said, it's going to be a 2 out of 5 across the board. It's a test of strength. There's nothing important to it. Um, I'm not rating rewards. It respawns, so sure, for a casual playthrough, you can farm it. It's kind of hidden, and the name is cool, but like it, there will only be, I think, one or two tests of strength that won't be a 2 out of 5, and I will explain why when we get there. But um, that's it for now, because I don't really have much more to say about it. Now this is um, the same story. We are at Soul Kofi, a minor test of strength. Uh, notable details is you usually meet uh, Zora here that will point you towards Sidon. Um, the location is pretty. It's raining right now, so not looking too pretty. It's a minor test of strength. It's gonna be the same, guys. Two out of five speed running. 
two out of five casual. It's maybe important to say that the minor test of strengths can be a little bit better for speedrunning for the simple reason that if you fail the wind bomb, you can at least kill the guardian relatively quickly with your base equipment. But it's just below average. There's too many shrines in the game that are better. That's my rating again. Four, so Kofi. I can simply move on to the next shrine, Sheirata, as it's basically right here. Uh, we can already see it in the back. Um, I guess it's fair to say to an extent that the exterior matters a little bit for getting the spirit orb, because this shrine is basically surrounded by thorns. You don't need to burn the thorns down. That's one way you can solve the shrine, technically. You can technically also go to this pillar on the left side, and then fly over, but um, I think this puzzle is too easy to really include for the shrine's rating. Now, um, I'm not going to be including the exterior because, again, this thorn puzzle doesn't seem to be playing too much of a role, but the exterior, uh, sorry, the interior is interesting. Um, this has a shot for me. Actually, yeah, because this is a biased rating, I will give the shrine a 4 out of 5 for speedruns. I will already say this, because this particular wind bomb, for some reason, is so satisfying. You can immediately start running, you do a turn wind bomb by aiming in this corner, and you get like this really nice low angle towards the end of the shrine. Every time I do the shrine, I look forward to this, because it just feels really satisfying to do. When it comes to casual playthrough, um, this shrine is all based around water. You basically hit these lasers and these buttons to control the water in the shrine. Um, there is technically a chest puzzle, which I haven't really talked about this yet. If there's a specific puzzle just to get the chest, I guess for casual playthrough I will rate it because it's part of the content and a lot of people did do it. For speedruns, obviously it doesn't matter. Um, again, it's a relatively compact shrine. It doesn't really stand out for me too much. Um, it wasn't one of those big aha moments, in my opinion. Again, whenever there's these lasers around, there tend to be multiple solutions to it. You can hit these buttons with a bow and arrow. You can stasis the laser. All things considered, um, this is probably going to be end up at a three out of going to end up at a three out of five for me, which is how all of these shrines have been. These puzzle shrines. I like them, but they're not like, they don't stand out that much to me. Um, apparently the laser can hit you, which is something that can happen. It's not boring, it is unique, a unique puzzle um, that's all about timing and water. It's a 3 out of 5. And speedrunning, I will give it a 4 out of 5 specifically for this um, wind bomb that I really like. Now the next shrine is gonna be, I think this would maybe be... Maybe this would be the most popular one out of five shrine casually. Because there's people hate different things, but I think this one in particular is just so hated. It's probably the most common shrine when I stream where people say, I hated the shrine. And this is Miro Shars. It's next to the Woodland Stable, which again doesn't really matter for actually getting the rewards, aka the Spirit Orb. But the idea of the shrine is to play golf. And it's a good idea. It could be really fun to do if it wasn't so frustrating. A lot of times people will really struggle getting this orb to the hole, which is the goal of this shrine. Um, there's a second part of doing this shrine where uh, it's even harder. But one thing that people don't do know is that there's actually a specific uh, consistent way to get the shrine into the hole, which is to use a two-hand weapon and hit it exactly five times. Now, people don't know this casually, but this is what we do in speedruns, which is why in speedruns I really like doing the shrine because people will be like, Oh my god, you made this look so easy. And look, boom, the orb is in. Um, and we are basically done with the shrine. I love showing this to people because they get mad of how long they took casually. Um, but a lot of people dislike that. Now, I will say because it's so memorable and people really remember this shrine, and especially the second puzzle, which is even harder, this can't be a 1 out of 5. I think the, the shrine is too memorable, and even though it may have not been fun for people, I think it has to be at least a 2 out of 5. Uh, I don't think I can comfortably rank it higher, though, with how many people hate it. In speedruns, though, it's really fun. It doesn't stand out too much, because at the end of the day, you're just using stasis, but it's at least a 3 out of 5, because it feels cool to uh, see people get mad. Next up is Da He Sho. Now, this shrine... If location mattered more, would have a much higher rating. Because it's essentially the war point for Terrytown, but it doesn't. And because it doesn't, it's simply just a minor test of strength 
but right out there in the open. So it's gonna be a two out of five. It's not an awful shrine, but it's below average because it's the same thing that every single test of strength is. Happens to be in a useful location. But it just feels filler, it doesn't feel memorable, and that's all I can say about Dahe Show. That being said, and speaking about memorable shrines, the next shrine is my least favorite shrine in the game. There's the Zikasha shrine, again the trend continues, a shrine being next to a stable. And it seems like that a lot of the shrines that are next to stables also seem to be centered around motion controls. And this one is no exception. The first part is maybe not so bad. You essentially solve like some sort of puzzle. Open up the way. That's fine. Might take you a little bit. Isn't the end of the world. Then you try and make your way past these lasers. Where, by the way, one thing that people don't know that you can do is you can use your shield. You can use your shield and block them semi-consistently. But this part. No shrine interior made me more aggressive than this one. I already gave away that I'm not the most patient person in the world and I don't have the most like maybe still hands in the world. I wouldn't be a very good like clockmaker, right? If you somehow had an easy time doing this, good for you. But I cannot tell you how many times I had like two orbs in. I tried to get the last one in. Oh, it failed again. Three orbs. Oh, and then it didn't hit the button. Like this scenario would happen so many times where I was like, okay, I just need to get the last orb in. Oh, oh, oh never mind. I don't even want to do this for the sake of it. I hated this so much. It took me like 15 minutes and I was just really upset. And this shrine is in my memory as the least fun I had inside of a shrine. And it's going to be a one out of five. Casually for that reason. Now speedruns. Um, this is a normal example of a three. We talked about this earlier. If there's a simple wind bomb to get to the end. It's a three out of five. And that's exactly what the shrine is. You stand in the corner. Um, a 2 out of 5. This is what this normally looks like. You just win from to the end and you can skip everything. And just because you skip the most annoying puzzle in the game, in my opinion, this strat feels even better, but it's just gonna be a normal 3 out of 5 speedrun shrine. Not really too important, but casually, this one I will always remember as some of the least fun I've had in Breath of the Wild. Let's move on to Sa the Harsh. Now we go into the shrine and we get presented with this uh, very small hint that we potentially have to use fire you don't have to use fire though you can use a bomb to blow up these crates and then this i'm trying to think if this is going to be a two or three out of five because i guess it's just an average shrine now there is several ways to uh, go past this section and i guess that would be what pushes it to a three out of five you can technically use bombs from outside the gate to blow up the crates you can obviously blow, uh, you can obviously like get the torch to fall down to burn the leaves. And all things considered, I think it's probably an average shrine. It would be a bit harsh to randomly say this is a 2 out of 5, but it can't be better than that. It's kind of whatever. The wind bomb that we do in the shrine is we go on this side of the elevator to just get enough height to make it over the wall. And I end up getting it here. But if you've ever speedrun this game, you would probably agree with me that for some reason the shrine is cursed. If you fail this wind bomb once, it seems to be so common to fail it again. And then again. And then again. And suddenly you lose a minute. I know that I'm not the only person that has this happen. Um, it might obviously just be placebo. But if you've ever done speedruns, this field is cursed. Um, you either get it first try or like 16th try. Literally, it's very weird. And this will push the rating down to a 2 out of 5 for me. Which might be superstitious, but it just is my experience. And I know I'm not the only one. That, be that being said, we go to Moa Keed, which is essentially Stasis 2 Electric Boogaloo. We got the puzzle that we had in Stasis earlier, but twice. And the orbs are now falling much quicker. The first one pretty much feels like Stasis. Um, I might or not might or might not make it here. I'm pretty sure if you fall down, you will actually still make it. The second one here is pretty tough. I remember getting really scared here casually. Um, what you can do is you can get hit and fall into the lava, but you can also um, stasis an orb right when it drops. You wait and then you run through. And I remember getting like freaked out of being like, oh my god. Please make it and you do eventually make it but it feels underwhelming like 
that moment might be memorable, but it feels like eh. you can technically also take this metal orb and like push the orbs back up. So again, there's different ways to solve it, but it feels so underwhelming. It's like so small, like two small running puzzles. That's not going to be enough to be a three. Unfortunately, this is only going to be a two out of five casually. That being said, speedrunning here is our pretty standard procedure where we just wind bomb to the end. It's worth to say that sometimes you hit the ceiling here with a square bomb and then sometimes it doesn't let you open the glider and you can actually miss the shrine but it happens too rarely to not give this a 3 out of 5 speedrunning wise but we have a 2 out of 5 here on our hands and just because it's a bit underwhelming casually a normal 3 out of 5 speedrunning wise. Tamul is a shrine quest shrine for some reason. They thought they were hiding it so well that they made a shrine quest on the, up, on the nearby stable to actually hint you towards it, but I don't think that should count towards the shrine puzzle. It's just very interesting how easy the shrine can be casually. You go into the shrine, you throw a bomb, and you're done. If you want to, you can technically even run up here and that's it. And that's still what we do in speedruns. It's always fun to show somebody for the first time, but I mean, what can you really say? You can technically wind bomb here, but most of the time it's not even faster. I, I guess when you first do the shrine and you don't know that these boxes exist, it's like, okay, there's fire here. I guess I need to like light up. Maybe this is how this worked for some people. Maybe some people didn't see the box and they were, I had like, this huge aha moment. Where they were like, oh, oh my god, I'm so smart, I have to like burn the leaves, oh. Uh, but then they were still done. I, I really feel like it's just, it just misses the mark. I, I guess one thing casually that's worth to say is that it's pretty cool. There's, a, there's something here that never really happens ever again. Where if you burn this chest, right, you get a key. But you can't reach the key, but you can use Magnesis. And this is this only really happens here. And I guess that's kind of cool. Getting the key out like this. Like, you only really do that here. But it's not really... It definitely doesn't count for the speedrun. I guess for casual play, it's worth to include because it only happens here. Is that enough to make it a 3 out of 5? Nah, I guess it's enough to make it a 2 out of 5 because there's this one memorable moment here which isn't even needed to beat the shrine. But I just misses the mark. And speedrunning, it's not bad because you just run through, it's fast, it's not annoying. I think Tamud is just gonna be a 2 out of 5 across the board. Now let's talk about Quao Rain. Quao Rain is pretty memorable to me actually. Let's take a look. So in here, you basically. You break this crate, you gain access to these weights, and you balance the scale around to eventually make your way up here, but not hit the thorns. It's interesting. Like I said, unfortunately, it's not unique because later Ya Rin in Lurlion Village also is centered around scales. But I'd say it's interesting enough. You feel relatively smart uh, moving these blocks around. It's not a hit shrine or whatever. Um, and it's just kind of out in the open, but I guess it's fine. I guess this is what we would call an average shrine. There's enough to it. Most people, when you when they see them, will at least somewhat remember it. When it comes to speedrunning, this will actually be a 2 out of 5 for the simple reason that we had earlier, where if you don't get this wind bomb just right, and I did, uh, it can be easy to fall back off and it just ends up being a time loss, which is frustrating. So it's a little bit below average when it comes to speedrunning and relatively average uh, casual. So it's going to be two speedrunning, three casual. All right, let's head in. Shemosa is the main shrine next to Goron City. Again, since it's not part of the puzzle, even though it has an advantageous uh, location by being right next to a major village, it won't count towards the rating. This shrine has actually an interesting history when it comes to speedrunning. Let's talk about this first. So in speedrunning, what we do nowadays is we blow up this um, part on the wall to access this barrel. When we use the barrel as kind of like a pedestal to wind bomb from, just through this hole, and then to be even faster to skip getting this barrel, we stasis this button and run to the end. And this is pretty unique, it's pretty cool. Uh, literally building our own like little wind bomb pedestal um, and then perfectly hitting that shot through. It's pretty satisfying. I think it takes 
It, it barely takes the four out of five for the simple reason that it's so different, but still fast and very consistent. I've never not had this work. It's not the fastest shrine in the world and not like super epic to watch, but I think it's unique enough. It's quite different casually. Instead of going up there, you actually enter this room. and There's a lot of stuff going on here. I don't think this specific wheel shows up in any other shrine. So that already is something that's unique. Um, there's some chests here. Uh, later on, you actually get to reuse this wheel up here. You kind of play like some, some marbles. I think it's a unique enough shrine to consider giving this a four out of five, but I think this is just going to be a high three. I, nah, I think it's just slightly not interesting enough, like the two bomb shrine we talked about earlier. That's a better example for a four out of five because it's cl um, it's more it's even more fun, more clever, with even less convoluted, but more fun. So this is three out of five, but four out of five speed running. Now, I do want to just leave the shrine by warping out because the next shrine, even though getting there, I, I think getting there casually should be part of getting the spirit orb. And that's going to be Shora Ha. One of the coolest shrines to get to in the entire game. We have this long minecart track. Some people, me included, at first didn't really know how to control this minecart. But what you can do is you can simply just throw in a bomb and blow them up and speed up more and more. Now, one frustrating thing with these minecarts, I don't know if this is frame rate dependent or physics engine dependent. And I almost had it happen here is that sometimes it just falls off. Um, one way to avoid this is to try to not go too fast. It obviously is super frustrating to have this happen more towards the end. But you can already see the shrine in the background. You kind of get this blurry vision because of how uh, supposedly warm it is here. You can see here the bomb wasn't actually rolling in. So there can be issues. And I do want to be careful because if I... And that's actually one thing with Breath of the Wild in general, right? If you fall into lava after something like this, you just get put to the last point you actually touch the ground on, which would be all the way back. So that can be frustrating. But if it doesn't happen, you end up getting to the shrine here. And it feels pretty cool. You're like, oh, wow, this is almost like a dungeon. Let's go in here. And not only is this the case, but casually, this is a 5 out of 5 shrine. This is definitely a 5 out of 5 shrine. It's an absolutely massive shrine with so many unique ways of lighting up these torches. We um, have like time shots. We have like a spin attack at the very end, which is um, so unique. You have to like use the torch, do a spin attack to light all of the torches at once. You have like little fights happening. You have like snipe shots. You have like stasis. You have like dodging the water. It's definitely a five out of five. Casually. But that being said, it might be the worst speedrunning shrine at this point because we don't even have... Earlier I was complaining about that shrine of the Gerudo Desert, the big metal orb one. This one is worse because we don't have like a cool strat that at least somewhat unique uh, consistently gets enough height. This is what happens all the time. You hit the wall and you get bad ragdoll RNG, so you don't make it to the end. If you do get lucky, you get a perfect angle so that you're able to open your paraglider. Let's see if we get it right here. Yep, and we get to glide to the end, but it's essentially a coin flip and ends up really frustrating. And for some reason, and this is honestly what makes the shrine even worse, someone thought that bombs don't blow up in lava. I don't know how they work because this blue fire immediately blows them up. But if you have a wind bomb fail here, sometimes you forget that your bomb is still out there because for some reason it stays active in lava. And that makes this even worse on occasional fails. This happens to everyone. You forget that you failed your wind bomb, your bomb is in lava. It's a bad time. Literally one of the most extreme ratings here. This is a 1 out of 5 speedrunning shrine with its inconsistency and frustrations and a 5 out of 5 casual experience. So normally there is a Goron here that sits blocking the shrine and you have to play the mini game. It costs 20 rupees to do. You have to get 100 rupees to um, win. You basically climb up. And this can be frustrating casually, especially if you don't have Rivali's Gale yet, because you might need a lot of stamina food or you might not have enough stamina. Thankfully, it can't rain here. Otherwise, this would be awful. But if you have Rivali's Gale, there's some ways around it, but it's not that fun, honestly. And it feels kind of bad having to play a mini game, like having to play it to enter the shrine. It's not the worst mini game, but I think it will end up being a two out of five just because it's not 
that fun and you're literally forced to play it otherwise you can't enter and yes you can make some money in the process but after all you just get access to a blessing shrine and it just doesn't feel great speedrunning wise it's much worse because either you have to play the mini game which already feels weird because you literally have to get the rupees or you have to do one of the least consistent shield clips in the game just to do a blessing shrine it's one of the most hated shrines in the community in categories where you actually need to do the quest you do the mini game it's not fun but if you just need to get the shrine in runs like all shrines you have to shield clip on the side of it i'm not even gonna do it right now because it's so inconsistent and i don't actually really remember how to do it even if i was doing it right there's just a chance that it won't work there's always gonna be a chance it's gonna be a one out of five it's bad that, that clip will never really truly be consistent i struggle to believe that maybe somebody has a run where they get it five times first try in a row and then they still won't get it let's uh, go here zunakai this is a shrine i can talk about pretty quickly it's just a blessing shrine on top of a mountain um casually i think maybe this one stands out to you a little bit because of its location and there is also a shrine quest related to it but you can also just glide over there um, and just maybe don't go here when it's raining so you can climb up if you need to. Speedrunning wise, the shrine is literally just out there. You wind pump there and then you do a blessing. I almost can't rate this one with how simple in nature it is. It's literally just right there. What can I even say? It's a blessing shrine. It's not a 1 out of 10 because it's not frustrating, but it's like whatever. I guess it's a 2 out of 5 and it's probably the same for casual playthrough because it's not annoying you in any way. It's not a 1. But it can't really be a three because it's just there. Then you get a blessing. Let's move on to Kenai Shaka. Another one that we can talk about quite quick. But yeah, let's talk about Kenai Shaka real quick. It's going to be another quick one. It's a modest sister strength. It's quite well hidden, honestly. Um, almost to the extent that I could say this is part of doing the shrine itself. But it's hidden behind a wall. It won't really change the rating. 2 out of 5, 2 out of 5. It's a modest test of strength. We'll get more tests of strength. And they're mostly gonna get the same rating, like I said. With small exceptions. I can't say much more about the shrine. The two from Tukamayel. It's the shrine in Tingle Island. Um, with all of these bridges. It's a very cool location. It's hidden behind a slab. Where lots of Octoroks are trying to be annoying to you. Again, I wouldn't be rating this for the actual shrine rating on the next one it will be much more important you'll see but karma is another shrine that's like somewhat scale based i do have fond memories for this shrine though because what you essentially do is you stand on here and i mean you can do this i'm sure you can do it a different way but this falls down here and you get to glide to the end this is also the old speedrunning strat i'm sure people probably didn't necessarily do it this way or they didn't jump right away but the strat ends up essentially being the same but instead of using it, you use magnesis instead uh, it's cool it, it, it's memorable enough it's very short though so giving it a three just for a cool memory is doesn't cut it there's a diamond here which again feels i'm pretty sure it is unless i'm wrong it feels completely out of place for something you can get this easily but again i'm not going to be using rewards for shrine ratings i will say that in speedrunning this is going to end up getting a three out of five just because it's your average speedrunning shrine where you can win bomb over but for casual i think this is only enough for a two out of five just because it's too little going on. Like, it's a funny laugh, haha. <laughs> I just catapulted myself, another scale. But that's pretty much it. It's cool to get a diamond, but I'm not really going to include this into the, the shrine's rating. I really think that would be wrong. Now, next up is one of my least favorite shrines casually. And one of my favorite shrines was speedruns. Um, we got another one of those really diverse ones that depend on what strategies you do for them. And this is a shrine that starts out by being underground. So the shrine puzzle will be part of of the rating. The shrine is Retag Zumo, and what does stand out for me is that this was one of the shrines where you see this area on the map and you just know there's gonna be a shrine there. And I really like doing that casually, looking at the map and looking at locations that could potentially be interesting to explore. And I did that. I went here and I saw this. You have to take the orb and go all the way around with tons of enemies. It was really anxiety inducing. There is this small little shortcut that you may or may not have found casually where you can save a little bit of walking time, but 
This is so annoying. And I wasn't aware back then that there's speed food really, so I didn't really use speed food. It wasn't a good time. I will probably give this a 1 out of 5 casually. Maybe you liked fighting these enemies if you're really into combat, but it just felt tedious. I liked finding it on the map, but that's pretty much it. And then you end up just getting a blessing. Now for speedrunning, the shrine is a gold mine. There is so many different ways to solve it. Unfortunately, I've already solved it here, otherwise I could show it to you, but you can technically place a cryonis block, bomb arrow the orb towards the shrine. You can use the orb and pretend right now that this bomb is actually the orb, and then use the orb itself to BLSS this entire scenario, this entire like area. And nothing feels more fun than to show somebody that was just like me and really disliked the shrine casually how easy it can be if you know beat strats. And that's why it's really up there. I, I think it's not special enough for a 5 out of 5, but it's at least a 4 out of 5 with the cool speedrunning tricks that you can do here. I'm still considering if maybe because of how memorable the location is that it might barely, maybe I will give it a 2 out of 5 casually because it's a memorable location and finding this in the first place is kind of cool i guess and if i think about the casual average player maybe some people liked fighting these enemies but for me it was basically tedious and anxiety inducing i think i can give it a two out of five in relatively good faith casual Lee, and it will be a 4 out of 5 for speedruns. I can already give this away because it's fast. This is a super easy wind bomb. 3 out of 5, 3 out of 5 normal uh, speedrunning shrine. But the way you play golf is this orb only comes out if you use the apparatus. You swing the bat. But I think this is fine. Again, out of all of the motion control shrines, this is probably the best. Um, does this make it a good shrine? No. It makes it an average shrine, I guess. I will at least give it that. I will at least give it that. Now, for casual playthrough, we can also include the second part of the puzzle, which is essentially the same thing, just a little bit more precise. You kind of have to, like, shoot it over this curve, which I don't remember, honestly, doing this myself. I feel like it's been a while that I've done this casually. At the end of the day, it is a motion control shrine. I think we did it here. Cool. How long did that take? A minute. I, I didn't suffer too much. I guess it's... A th is it average? Think about every single shrine I give. Yeah, I think it's unique enough. It's fine. For being a motion control shrine, it was trying to be different and it kind of succeeded at it. Was it the best time ever? Nah, it's like a low three. Now, I already gave this away, but 2 Kalo is going to be another maze shrine. So there's not much to say here. I think this maze maybe stands out even more for it being on a literal island and also being very clear to find on the map. It's gonna be a 5 out of 5 casually. Um, these mazes really stand out to me as a unique experience. Um, and it's gonna be a 3 out of 5 for me in speedrunning. Just like I said, pretty much every maze will be. You enter from the top and it feels pretty cool. The only thing that pushes this back a little bit is that there's this annoying wind that you have to deal with sometimes, even when you're doing speed strats. I don't know if I should be ranking this part uh, here below, which is pretty cool. I shouldn't. I think this is part of the location of the shrine, really. Yes, you can farm guardian parts here. Yes, there's a diamond circle. Yes, there's a DLC medallion. But, like, it's not part of the shrine. I will be grabbing this anyway because it looks good. But um, that's pretty much all I can say about two Kalo. Let's move on to Rito Village. We're pretty much done now with Akala. All right, we're back at Tina Kosa. Now, Tina Kosa is another test of strength. It's in one of my favorite locations of the game, which I won't be counting towards its rating, but I really like the ancient columns. I think they are pretty interesting when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom theory crafting, but it won't matter. It's a test of strength. It's a two out of five. It's not one of the special tests of strength. I will rank every test of strength two out of five in both ways. I already explained why in, in detail. But I will mention if there's an other test of strength that stands out in some way. That's all I can say for Tena Kosa. From here, we can easily make it to Shelo Yado, which is a shrine on the other side, next again to another stable. This time, the Tabantha Bridge Stable. This shrine is not a test of strength, and it's a relatively simple puzzle shrine. But I think, like I said before, sometimes the simplistic shrines are pretty cool. For some reason, I seem to have a talent to tune into people's streams or casual playthroughs when they do this specific shrine. I feel like I've seen so many people do this specific shrine. I don't know why that is. I guess it's one of the easier ones to find. So it's one that you see more commonly, but it's pretty simple. You start out by shooting this orb. Um, you can shoot it with stasis. You can shoot it with a bomb barrel. All you need is to get it away from its original location. It will fall down here, activate this pedestal, and the reason the shrine is so cool is the next part, because 
you can use this pedestal to then go into bullet time and shoot the switch. And something about that just feels really cool. I really like doing it the first time I did it. And I think it's a cool, simple shrine. It feels different enough. It gives you the cool bullet time moment. And it's not super simple to figure out the first time you do it. I've seen many people actually struggle with this. When it comes to speedrunning, not much to say. It's a classic wind bombing shrine. I think this is a very good point, though, to say that this seems a bit small, almost too small. Yes, it might be. Like, it, it does feel like there could be a second room to kind of, like, work more around this bullet time idea, where now you have to hit, like, three switches in bullet time or something. So I feel like there could have, would have definitely been more potential, but... I think the amount of fun still warrants it a 3 out of 5. The bullet time shot is cool, that first part is interesting to figure out. There could have been more, it's gonna be a 3 out of 5 though. It's a bit short, but it's fun enough and speedrunning wise, we have the classic wind bomb. However, not every shrine is just gonna be a 3 out of 5, especially when it comes to the next one. The next shrine is Toyasa, and right now it doesn't look that bad, because it's not thunderstorming. Some people like the thunderstorm here, they like what it adds to the overworld, but actually playing inside the thunderstorm is not that fun. The goal is to basically get these colored orbs into the center. They're kind of chilling outside on these Zonai statues and cool, there's Zonai stuff, maybe some Tears of the Kingdom hits, hints, that's all fine. But getting these orbs over here is so frustrating. Yes, you can use stasis and this is what we do in speedruns to get them into the center. But thinking about this casually, I feel like you were not really conditioned to necessarily think about that. Maybe you can use Octorok balloons or do some weird mechanic, barely throw them up here. But it just ends up being so frustrating most of the time. And what makes it worse is that obviously it's constantly thunderstorming. If you're not prepared, you are gonna get hit by lightning because you might not know the mechanics of metal weapons. If you do use stasis casually, that might end up uh, being a cool experience for you because you figured it out. But I feel like a lot of people, me included, didn't and just ended up not having a good time here, being basically annoyed at the thunderstorm. Worse, there's lots of enemies that spawn here, making your life even harder. And I just didn't have a good time with the shrine. I think it's too harsh to give it a one just because there is interesting mechanics and we are not done, which is for some reason, and th this is actually a complaint. There is some shrines in this game where you do so much. You do this entire puzzle, you fight your way through, and then you still have to solve a puzzle inside a shrine. When, for example, up here, we have a shrine in cold water, that is just a blessing. They could have easily swapped the interior of this shrine up there, and then instead made this a blessing shrine. I really think this should have been a blessing shrine. Not because I don't like doing shrine puzzles, but because it feels like overloaded. It just feels overloaded. Like, why would this not be a blessing after having to do so much outside? Um, two out of five probably casually for me because of the outside and the inside makes it justified because I like shrine puzzles. But uh, this could have also almost been a one out of five. When it comes to the outside, I will say in speedruns, it's not much better. Yes, you can use stasis relatively effectively to get the ball exactly into the center, but it still feels slow, it still feels frustrating. You have to watch cutscenes, not only for entering the area, but also for the shrine spawning. Inside is actually really fun though. Um, you basically get to go crazy here and blow up a ton of blocks. You end up getting um, that metal block out and can solve the puzzle. I think casually it's a pretty fun time. You get to use your destructive power a little bit. For speedruns here, you can simply wind bomb up top. Um, it is one of those shrines where you can actually miss the cage, which drags this down a little bit. Um, we had other cool strats in the past here. Maybe I can show this one off. There's actually a pretty unique one. You throw down a square bomb. Then you place the metal block on top of the square bomb. You stand on the square bomb. You stasis, you do something called a bow spin, where you, uh, and I will have to redo this because otherwise I run out of time. A bow spin is essentially a strategy where you're allowed to hit something that's below you with a spin attack. Kind of like this. Then you blow up the bomb. Then you use stasis. And you ride the block up. It, it's... Um, a pre-wind bomb strat that's pretty cool, pretty unique. I wanted to show it off. It's not going to play part. Uh, it's not going to be a part of the rating. I think overall I end up giving this a two out of five in every way. Casually speed running. The exterior puzzle drags it down too much, and even the wind bomb here isn't super consistent. It's going to be a two out of five shrine. Toyasa. 
Uh, next up is Zumbatag, which um, pretty well hidden, but not well hidden enough to count it towards the shrine. How was the order of the shrine? Um, shrines determined. Basically, just why, uh, how I would do them in speedruns. Now we are in Dunbatag. It's a cool shrine casually, I would actually say. Um, this might be a 4 out of 5. Unfortunately, we didn't get the button press first try here. I think the second orb will press it. Uh, and then you got this pathway to the left, where you can essentially get a chest. Here again, you can use stasis against these barrels to throw over the slab. That can be a little bit this can be a little bit frustrating. Like sometimes you'll have the slab fall down. You can also, and I guess this is not really casual, but you can use bomb arrows against the top of it. Oh yeah, I was shooting too high. That's something you can do. It's a fun, it's a fun one, I think. Uh, especially even if you use stasis here, there's enough going on. I think this is a four out of five casual experience for speedrunning it's your classic shrine you wind bomb to the end it's worth to note that the wind bomb i wouldn't say is the most consistent one in the world kind of do it at a strange angle but usually it works out pretty well and it's your classic speedrunning shrine now we are going back towards the gerudo area now um kima kosasa i it's not one of those special test of strength shrines it's a two out of five not much more to say we talked about this at this point, you know, it's a major test of strength, but whatever, decently well hidden, doesn't matter. So okay, Matsos, it's inside the sandstorm, which I guess you could count towards getting the spirit orb. Maybe because it's a little hard to get to otherwise. I, since it's not underground, I won't be counting that towards the rating. There's a pretty fun thing you can do here, um, a delayed puzzle. So what you can do is you can like use stasis on this orb, for example, and then use an arrow to make it fall down. But one of my favorite ways to beat the shrine is this. You literally just use a shock arrow and the door opens. And this is actually still what we do in speedruns. You can technically also wind bomb over. It's always pretty funny to show somebody for the first time. This thing actually ended up falling down as well because of using bullet time. It's obviously the alternative way uh, to just place that right here. It pretty much does the same thing. Uh, I think the shock arrow method is cooler and it's kind of like the universal way. It's a very short, very fast shrine, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially when it comes to speed running. I guess it's a bit underwhelming casually, but I think then it's fair to at least cut at the slack and being like, okay, it is pretty well hidden. There is a sandstorm shrine quest you have to maneuver through first. It's, it's definitely just a three in speedruns it's just it's there it's cool it's not disappointing it's not frustrating but casually i'm a little bit on the fence i think the sandstorm makes it makes it justify to say three here as well so in a speedrun you technically don't have to kill this molduga you can simply like wind bomb here land on this like on these stones and then use something like a long range bow to shoot these like two torches at once um in a speedrun, that's different though. Even if you use a sand seal and you like ride around and shoot the torches with fires, that could be pretty fun. But I would almost say fighting the Moduga should kind of be part of getting the shrine, which is cool. I personally enjoy Moduga fights. I don't know if people really dislike them casually. If they do, they might not know about the damage you could do with the Bosa's Fury to them, which makes these fights quite a bit easier. I guess it's fair to say that you might not know this when you play casually. But um, you you just get a blessing at the end. I, I'd say casually if we count the Molduga fight because it is a highlight, especially if you fight your first Molduga and I think the music is so memorable. And I think it's kind of fair to count the fight towards getting the shrine out of the ground because realistically an average casual player might not light out of the torches. Actually, I don't know. Maybe enough people wanted to badly avoid fighting that Molduga. I know a lot of people casually wanted to save their weapons up as well as possible. So if you could skip a fight, they did it. But I think it's fair enough to say Molduga fight counts towards the shrine. And if it does, I think this is a pretty solid shrine that people will remember because of it. I think that's why I would say it's average. Usually, Blessing Shrines for me would start out below average, especially if they're simply just sitting around the world. There's going to be some of those Shrines later on. But because the fight is memorable, this will be a 3 out of 5. In speedruns, however, I will give this a 2 out of 5. It just feels tedious to shoot these torches. You can shoot them from the air at bullet time. You can get relatively interesting snipes, but you just end up having to go through a blessing. In some speedruns, you have to kill the Molduga, not because it makes your life harder, but because you want either to kill the Molduga for the Kilton medal 
or you want to get the Molduga guts, one of the quests in Gerudo Town, which is simple enough with three Obosa's Furies, or using Shock Arrows, which do a lot of damage to them. I think my rating here is going to be 2 out of 5 for speedruns, and 3 out of 5 because of the memorable fight in your casual playthrough. Hava Cod is inside the Gerudo skeleton, which is a cool location, but it's not part of solving it. Even though it's kind of hidden in a sandstorm, it's much easier to find than the previous one. Fortunately, this is not a blessing shrine or a very short shrine. It's actually quite an intricate, big electric based shrine that I personally liked a lot. Now, there is multiple ways to get through this first part of the shrine. One cool one that I like is literally just shooting a shock arrow against that metal block, which will activate these gears. And then here, your goal is to basically... It's actually quite, kind of a unique shrine. I kind of want to talk about it more. The goal here is to bring... And then I have to basically bring this orb to, over to the other side without touching um, these glass orbs. If you get too close to the glass orbs, the bridge will actually throw you off, which is a pretty unique concept. If you want to, you can then mess around with the guardians uh, by either just tanking through the shots or... Ah, see, this is actually exactly what I meant. Um, we did end up killing the guardian, but... It can be, I guess it can be frustrating, but I think it's a pretty cool, interesting, unique twist. And while I would say it's mostly frustrating, I will uh, say that the chest portion of the run is definitely pretty unique. It's one of the bigger Magnesis puzzles we have, where you have to basically build a connection by using stasis and this tilt function accordingly. And it's pretty cool. I'd say this is... Oh wait, this is not even for the chest, you actually need this gear. I just realized, I think you actually need this part of the shrine, what am I saying? Because you need the gear to even open the door. So, all things considered, I think this is a pretty cool, unique shrine, despite the fact that this could be frustrating. It's not as frustrating as Kaya 1, we talked about a long time ago though, where you literally die, You just and even if, if this happens, you can just like grab the orb with Magnesis back up. And I think it's memorable enough to give this a 4 out of 5. In speedrunning, this will be a 2 out of 5. Mainly because you just run through the shrine and you do a shield clip through this pillar. And that's why this is only a 2 out of 5 in speedrunning. It's fine, it's not the worst, but it's not one of my favorites. Now let's talk about Rakat Sunzo. Um, technically, doing the Vine Beast Va Naboris should be part of getting the shrine out of the ground casually. You cannot do the Sand Seal race without doing Vana Boris. For simplicity's sake, I won't count this. But technically, it should be. Now, once Vanaboris is defeated, which you're probably going to be doing anyway casually, you can do the Sand Seal race and you have to break a specific record, which should be relatively easy to do with decent driving skills to get this orb as a reward to get this blessing out of the ground. The Sand Seal minigame is a pretty fun one. It's actually one of my favorite minigames in Breath of the Wild. It's not like the gut check rock one we talked about earlier. And honestly, it is unique enough and I will probably give this a 4 or 5 casually because it's an actual fun mini game. It's not too tedious to do. It might even have some replay value. Uh, and then obviously you just get uh, the orb, you get a blessing shrine. Not quite a 5 out of 5 experience, but overall it's fine. For speedrunning, this is actually a massive deal. The shrine in the past was one of the biggest time losses because of what I just said. You need Vana Boris to actually do the Sand Seal minigame. Thankfully, that's no longer required. With glitches that we have to enter the shrine early. I wouldn't really count that as a speedrunning strat for the shrine because it just ends up being a blessing, but it's worth pointing out. In speedruns where you do do the Sand Seal race, I kind of like it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I probably will give it a 3 out of 5 because at the end of the day, again, it's just a blessing shrine, but it has some upsides. And those upsides are that it's um, it has an in-game timer. And honestly, in-game timers are great for speedruns. They are fun to do with your chat, for example, when you're streaming. People can guess what time you're gonna get. You get instant feedback from the game in terms of how fast you're moving, how good you're doing. And I like it. And despite it just being a blessing shrine, that will push it to a 3 out of 5 for a speedrun. Uh, but a 4 out of 5 casually for being a fun minigame and a unique enough shrine. Now, I will be honest with you, I'm a little bit salty to this day about Korsh Ohu. Korsh Ohu is the shrine in the middle of these heroin statues, and they may or may not play a role later in Tears of the Kingdom. The reason I'm sad about the shrine is because I was really expecting this to be more than a shrine. This location seems so special and so different that I was really thinking when I solve this puzzle that's not going to be a shrine, it's actually going to be a dungeon. 
It wasn't. You get a blessing shrine. And it's actually really tedious to solve this puzzle casually. I personally didn't have Rivali's Gale when I did this. So I had to climb a lot and slowly but surely figure out where to put these orbs. I can already give it away. This shrine is going to be, because of its uniqueness and location, a 2 out of 5 casually. I feel bad giving it a 1 just because of how special it feels. But it's not fun to do, it's tedious to do. Again, it will drastically depend on whether you have Rivali scale or maybe even no speedrunning strats when you encounter this. In speedruns, it's just boring. You do already know the solution for the shrine, so you solve the puzzle quickly, but that still makes it so that you essentially end up running around, dropping Magnesis balls from one opening to another, and you just lose two and a half minutes. It's not fun to do, and it's slow. So it's frustrating, but it's consistent. So I'm not gonna give it a one. Gonna give it a two. It's sad. I think it's one of the biggest missed potential shrines in the game with how special it feels. Maybe we'll see more of this location in Tears of the Kingdom. Next up is Misai Zuma. This is the shrine tied to the perfect drink quest. A pretty big, annoying quest to do, casually. You have to go here, find this lady, you won't get the war point. You have to go back to Gerudo Town, do the Ice House quest, which can be anxiety inducing and not very fun because there's these fire Zalfos. And then you have to go back here. And normally you won't have a war point here because you don't probably have the DLC when you do this and you can't activate the shrine. So it's just really annoying to do, to get back and sure, you just get a blessing from it. And again, there's a diamond in there, which I won't be counting towards the rating. I think this is just a giant chore and nothing of it is fun. I will probably give the shrine a one just because that really nothing about the shrine is fun. Like other than the fact maybe that, haha, She's finally, suddenly running because the drink is there now. I can't really, in good faith, give this more than a one, honestly. It's just a big chore, and then you get a blessing. Cool. I think most people will remember the shrine as being annoying. Now, in speedruns, thankfully, we can skip everything by clipping through the wall. And even if we have to do the quest, because we're doing 100% or all quests, you can cheese the ice block uh, mini game by using the relatively new slide glitch where you can slide with the ice block making this a lot better but still not great it's still gonna be a two out of five slight improvements over casual play because of how you can do it quicker and it's less tedious but the shrine doesn't really stand out two out of five speedrun one out of five casual now i already talked about mazes this is maze number three they're gonna be a 5 out of 5. This is my favorite maze, casually, because it was the most annoying one. And <laughs> I just complained about shrines being annoying, but this one is just memorable and a fun experience. Once you finally make it into the maze. Um, some people might not like it, and that's fair, but again, I'm into the puzzle-type content. So I had a good time in this on my first playthrough. And then again, in speedruns, this is a classic 3 out of 5. You enter the shrine from above and you instantly finish it. It's fun, it's cool to show for the first time. And then you're immediately out of there with a wind bomb. All of the mazes ended up getting the same rating here. Um, they definitely stand out big time, casually. And in speedruns they're fine, so this maze is no different. So Suma Sama starts underground and has one of the most frustrating puzzles in the game. If you know what you're doing, it's no longer that hard, but essentially this book is there being kind of confusing about it. You have to cast a cold shadow against this pedestal. There's technically two ways of doing this. You can make a cryonis block here. This actually works. If the cryonis block casts its shadow onto this pedestal, the shrine will come out of the grounds. But more commonly, what people will do is grab this snowball. Now, my problem was I came here, and the first time I did it, I waited all the way from 12 to 4.30 p.m. in game time, just for this to not really work. Sometimes it's kind of foggy here, and you can't really see the shadow that you're casting, and it can be easy to miss. And then you have to do the entire thing again. You wait until noon, and then you just sit here until 4.30 p.m., waiting for your chance to enter the shrine again. What do you get? A blessing shrine. I think... While the idea is cool and figuring out, ah, this is how I cast the cold shadow, I think it ended up not really working out that way. Maybe your experience was different. Maybe for you it worked first try seamlessly and you felt really smart doing so. If that was the case, I could understand that you rate the shrine higher. I'm not going to hate on it too much because, again, it uses some 
interesting um interesting puzzling by reading this book and then coming up with the solution so it's gonna be a two out of five for me but because of my bad experiences with the shrine and because it's just a blessing it will just be a two out of five when it comes to speed running it's worse i cannot in good faith really give the shrine better than a two out of five it's not annoying and one material even though it almost is it's just that time-based shrines are not really that fun for speedruns they usually force you to play the game in a certain way it's also a blessing so there's nothing special to it i think one is too harsh because there's nothing super frustrating about it but it just isn't really a shrine in the speedrun spirit so a two out of five for the shrine in every way feels correct to me and with that we can move on to ishto show which is just down here now ishto so is out here and you can see it from very far away because there's basically this cloud because this lady is cooking a rock roast or at least trying to and it's not just a blessing shrine it's actually some sort of puzzle and i like this one it's a fairly simple puzzle I think there's a fair point to say that people can get frustrated here because nowhere else in the game does the game require you to pick up a laser like this. I'm pretty sure it's also possible probably to use bombs or something to choose uh, to beat the shrine in a different way. I think this was the sort of shrine where I was probably spoiled when I played the game on stream and somebody told me that I can pick up the laser. Once you do know that you can, it's pretty simple. You just wait for the laser to do its thing and slowly climb up the shrine. But I guess it's unique enough and it's like a big aha moment when you grab the laser that being said i think it probably led to frustration for people that had never learned that you can do this and it is fairly simple fairly small and i don't know if i can give this a three out of five meaning it's an average shrine it's hard to say my experience here is a little bit tainted because i'm pretty sure i got spoiled that you can put the uh, laser down there and it was like ah that's cool i had like this aha moment that definitely didn't happen to everyone so i feel like most people probably got frustrated and eventually looked it up which makes me kind of want to give this a two in speedruns this is your average three out of five shrine you can just win bomb from the beginning to the end next up is shoka tatone and this is the shrine featuring loon who for me is already in love with a guardian she starts out being in love with this orb that we need to get the shrine out of the ground we get the shrine out of the ground by taking three pictures of guardians. I think this is not a great experience because most of the time you'll get here and you won't have these pictures yet. So you eventually have to return to here and there's no war point. It's not the worst thing to do, but what do you get for doing this quest? A test of strength, which I already talked about. For me, it's just going to be a two out of five on average. I think the pictures don't make it that bad that I would somehow give it a one out of five. At the end of the day, it's just test of strength. We already talked about bought in plenty so i think i will keep my rating of two out of five here now kaoma kalk is another shrine next to a stable and it's obviously not just a blessing even though there is some pretty obnoxious blessing shrines that seem pretty easy to get this one isn't one of them it's actually quite clever and had some cool speedrun strats in the past giving this away already it's a classic three out of five speedrunning shrine where you win bomb from beginning to end but let's talk about casual playthrough and there's one particular part that ends up really cool it ends up being this aha moment i talked about these aha moments uh, a couple times before and this was uh, definitely one that i remember but it's basically blowing up this block and being able to grab the door as a normal bridge sort of thing so what you can do is and you can normally grab a metal block but if you get the right jump you can also just glide over which i'm assuming people probably didn't do casually but then you basically build your own bridge and a little bit too little i think for me to give it over a three but because of this aha moment of being able to grab the part of the door and build your bridge it should at least be a three now puma Nitai, we have another minor test of strength it's in a great location i'll have everything themed around zonai but it won't be enough to change it from a two out of five rating again like i promised there will be actually two tests of strengths in this run I mean, there will be two tests of strengths in this video that will not just be a 2 out of 5, that will be to some extent special and we still haven't seen them yet. Puma Gintar is not that. It's a minor test of strength that happens to be in a cool spot. 2 out of 5 across the board. But next up is She Carter, and this one is even more impressive when it comes to location. It might be in my favorite location in Breath of the Wild, but that's probably recency bias. This area is obviously very interesting with Tears of the Kingdom in mind. Um, we have evidently a lot of Zonai structures around. 
Unfortunately, this is only just a blessing shrine. It seems like the real puzzle here is obviously you need a dragon part to get it in the first place, which I guess is something that can be tedious as a casual player. I think the dragons can be a little annoying, especially if it's a Farosh. Um, you see Farosh quite often, but because he shoots electric attacks it can be easy to get hit and fall down and then you can maybe lose your dragon parts it might not be the best experience getting here there's a ton of the Zalfos, which can be stressful but uh, at the end of the day you just get rewarded with a blessing i do like this location a lot but it shouldn't really push the rating for it all things considered when it comes to extra gameplay getting the dragon part can be a bit annoying getting through this area not considering how cool is how cool this is can be a bit annoying as well but i think as an experience overall even though the gameplay might not be strong if i rated all of the dragon springs i think this would be probably number two which makes me want to give this a four just because of how much it stands out as a casual experience but the dragons being annoying i'm considering between four and three uh casually but i think the other dragon spring that i'm thinking of is going to get a three and the other one is going to get a five so i kind of want to give this a four even though it's a blessing just because of how special it feels i wish this wasn't a blessing i wish this was like another electric themed like cool shrine or something but knowing that the other dragon springs are gonna get the rating they're gonna get i will give this a four casually however speed running wise i can only give this a two uh, you get the dragon part pretty much early on because you're farming the dragon anyway to get more speed food in most speed runs it's tedious it, you go here you win from all the way here just to place the scale down you watch a cutscene and then you run through the blessing shrine it's below average when it comes to speed runs and obviously the location and the experience doesn't really matter in a run so yeah it doesn't i don't hate it it's not a one but yeah two out of five for speed runs and four out of five for casual is my final stance for this let's move on to dark hako Dakako, it's a shrine um, sitting kind of above the Goron city. And it's a nice little quick shrine to give this away. It's another three out of five for speedruns. Your classic, I wind bomb up, I finish the shrine. Casually, it's a bit different. It's again, one of those ones that feel like just a little bit too small to be anything but a three. The question is if I'm gonna give it a two or a three. The way that I think most people solve this is by opening the paraglider standing on top of the block and then using stasis when the block is up top which you have to figure out obviously first of all and then you glide in here to finish it up i think i'm missing a little bit more for this despite how i think cool the actual solution for the shrine is i think i am missing a little bit more it definitely cannot be a four is it test of strength level at the end of the day this is kind of your average shrine which Again, pushes me more towards three. And shrines that would be like this with a different room would probably reach the number four ra ra rating. I think with the unique way of solving it, it will hit the three. Because at the end of the day, this is kind of your average puzzle shrine. But um, yeah, I need definitely much more for a four. It doesn't matter how cool the solution for this. That's pretty much what I want to say about Dark Ako. Okay, we are at Keirama. This shrine is usually not available until you solve the brother's quest where you bring a rock roast up the mountain this definitely should be considered part of getting the shrine i don't like this i don't like this in speedruns i don't like this casually it feels scary uh these moblins are trying to attack you there is boulders that are trying to push you down a big boulder at the very end as much as the quest itself is lovely and the brother being recovered from the rock roast the actual process of getting the rock roast here in my opinion is below average it's not an upside but let's check out the shrine interior wise which i can already tell you it's gonna be pretty good casually casually uh, even though this is not technically a reward in the sense that you get a chest it's almost unavoidable to not get rewarded when you do this shrine you run around the anxiety doesn't stop boulders start chasing you but it's almost unavoidable to get rupees in here and that is just in a way always going to be use, uh, useful casually you essentially dodge these boulders and make your way to the end of the shrine i think it's um a memorable enough experience and these three rupees being even more memorable that despite the annoying exterior i will give this another three out of five casually just because the shrine itself is kind of cool uh, that being said normally i would give the shrine a uh, two out of five or something uh, for speedruns because of how long it takes to get the rock roast up 
but I will actually, just because of how much you can improve the shrine on, give it a 3 out of 5 for speedruns as well. So 3 across the board. The reason being is there's actually quite cool ways to get the rock roast up, either by doing specific launches or by uh, using a glitch called Golden Gauntlets. And the speedrunning strat for the interior of the shrine is pretty cool as well. I'm going to try to show it off. It doesn't always work because it's relatively precise. And this only really works with the bombs plus rune because you need to have your bombs on relatively low cooldown. All right, now we try to do this. And there we go. We got the mid-air wind bomb all the way up here and finish off the shrine. Feels pretty cool to do and that's gonna push the shrine up to a three out of five. Now we're gonna get some low ratings out of the way. Next up, we made it to the Dark Chokar Shrine. And if I hadn't already said that Z Car Show, the motion control shrine earlier, was my least favorite shrine in the game, it would definitely be this one. This looks pretty innocent. It's a blessing shrine in the middle of Korok Forest. But if you know how to enter this Korok Shrine casually, you might already agree with me. This is the shrine where you follow the Korok Oki through the Dark Forest. And I made it specifically annoying experience when I did this casually. I'm not very patient. I don't like stealth missions and I was following Oki all the way until the very end. On the very end there's these wolves that attack Oki and when the wolves attack him he's like please help the wolves are attacking me I need help I need help right now and I thought this was my cue to actually come out of hiding and protect him because the entire idea was that I protected him right so I was like oh Oki is in trouble. I'm gonna help him. I'm gonna save his life. So I run out of hiding, try to help Oki, um, who's getting attacked by wolves. And what does he say? Hey, I thought nobody was following me. I'm going back now. I was like, what? I just saved your life. You're gonna die to wolves. And instead, he's mad at me. And I was so mad. I was literally gonna quit the game. I remember this. I remember saying, okay, I don't care. I'm not doing every shrine anymore. I'm quitting. I'm, I'm very impatient when it comes to these stealth missions, but that one in particular annoyed me because of that experience. Casual, one out of five. You won't change my mind. I don't care how much you like Oki or how cute he is. This is a biased list, one out of five. Uh, speed running wise, thankfully you can skip that entire quest unless you do something like 100% where you do have to wait until Oki reaches the shrine. So it's a little bit better because in speedruns where you have to wait for Oki, it gets much worse. It's gonna be a two out of five because you can at least skip it if you want to, but casually it is a one out of five, very low rated shrine. One out of five casual, two out of five speedrun. Let's move on to one that I actually like. Now we are at the Keo Rook Shrine. It's a shrine in the middle of Korok Forest, pretty close to the Master Sword. And you might be surprised at my casual rating for this one. You might disagree, but let me explain why. Now, some people didn't like this because they don't like puzzle shrines. This was my favorite puzzle shrine in the game because it actually felt hard. What you have to do is you essentially have to figure out that there's these constellations on the wall. If you don't know how to do this, let me explain. It basically says, look to the stars for guidance, the constellations are the key. So you see these constellations on the wall and you see them on the wall here. And then you see torches that basically count from one to five. So you look at this constellation, which is three stars. And then you look at the wall and you count how many times you see it. In this case, this constellation is on the wall five times, which means you have to grab the orb and place it to number five because this constellation is on the wall five times and basically you keep doing uh the same thing you count how many constellations are in here and there I, I think this definitely pushed it in terms of puzzle shrines it was probably the hardest one but in my opinion solvable and it felt pretty cool to figure it out i had a really good experience with this one and because of this it will be a five out of five to me it counts to one of my favorite shrines in the game if you don't like puzzles and you didn't figure this one out i can absolutely understand that you don't like it or that you hated it but because again this is my list and i think i could explain why i like it so much this is a five out of five in speed runs i actually really like the wind bomb at this shrine for some reason it feels extra satisfying to get this specific angle but that's not gonna be enough to push it higher than a three out of five we got our classic wind bomb shrine. That's my rating for Keo Rook. Mak Halan is the shrine that you have to reach by doing the test of wood. A race through the forest by only using specific gear. I don't hate 
that race by any means, but I also don't really like it. I guess particularly that last part is annoying because you get shot here. If you do have arrows, you obviously can take care of this guy, but I wouldn't necessarily say this was an amazing experience. It is also just a blessing shrine after all. Already having said that the blessing shrine for me is kind of like a tool of five by default, it's not like this race improves it so much that it would be better than that. I think this is another two out of five shrine for me, casually. In the speedrun, you can skip the entire race, so you end up just wind bombing through and i guess that feels fun in a way but then it's also just a blessing i think this is gonna be a two out of five across the board pretty much all i can say to makalan yeah you can use rivali scale you can even use the fire updraft to fly over these areas your average casual player probably won't do that maybe i'm underestimating the average casual player i think the race didn't improve this blessing shrine so i think it's fair to say two out of five last but not least in korok forest we got kun sidash it's actually a shrine i like a little bit more so what you do here is you follow these metal balls that are basically stuck in some of the trees it feels kind of interesting to figure that out in the first place then you end up in this area here where there's a metal shield that you have to put into one of the tree's mouth which is another cool moment of like oh wow i'm so smart and then you essentially have to escort this chest that spawns in this tree's mouth over to the main island with the boat where you can use the korok leaf or in speedruns the chest itself to drive it over uh, in speedruns you skip most of the puzzle you still have to do the chest part and it's overall a pretty fun experience but it's just a blessing after all and i don't really can i can't really say that i'm looking forward to the shrine and runs so unfortunately it's going to be a two out of five but for a casual experience i think it's fun enough to give it a three uh, it's just a blessing shrine but the puzzle is itself are pretty fun and pretty unique i'd say three out of five casually and two out of five for speed runs we are at saskosa which is another test of strength it happens to be in the middle of Hyrule Castle, which might for some of you sound useful, but that's definitely not enough for me to push it up to a 3 out of 5. It's a 2 out of 5. It's a major test of strength and you have to light a torch to get it out of the ground, but that is not enough to lift its rating. We are going to be getting to a better test of strength soon, but Saskosa is not that. Anyway, we are at the Noya Neha Shrine, another test of strength close to Hyrule Castle. There is technically some thorns that you may or may not burn entering the shrine, but at the end of the day, same scenario. This is not a shrine that improves a test of strength since this is a minor test of strength. So unfortunately, it will still get a two out of five across the board. Let me see if I can get a wind bomb outside here because the next shrine is nearby and that's going to be the Zalta Var shrine, which is thankfully not a test of strength. It's in the middle of the breach of the mice. I think the lore to, for this place is that this was actually destroyed by Dark Beast laser in the past or something like that. The shrine itself is a small but fun shrine that can be skipped by just doing a wind bomb. So for speedruns, it's going to be a normal three out of five. But doing the puzzle can be pretty fun. It's again, pretty small shrine. I actually don't have any single shot arrows right now, which might make stuff like this a little bit more tricky. Okay, so what you do here is you essentially shoot the orb into the pedestal again you get a second orb and then you use stasis and you kind of build the shrine up once you get this out you can use uh you can time and i guess we have kind of like three puzzles at once uh because we have the the two orbs and we have this where we have to like time our jump and then we run up the stairs um, is that enough to give it an average shrine rating? I'd say so by the things that I talked about earlier. I think this is your average shrine. So 3 out of 5 uh, across the board for Zaltava. We are now at Shimda Ghost where you have to shoot an arrow through two specific rings to actually get the shrine out of the ground, which I didn't really fully understand because I was actually able to get other angles where you can shoot the arrow through two rings, but at the end of the day, it did make sense. I do like this shrine casually though. Casually, this is a pretty fun one. It's about timing and you have to get both of these orbs into the respective like areas. I think it's pretty fun. Probably another three out of five sort of shrine for me. It seems like your average Breath of the Wild shrine. There's some chest that you can explore back there. Getting the shrine out of the ground is pretty fun. For speed running, there's an easy wind bomb you can do, but one particular thing I like for the shrine is that you can do this strat that I just failed, which is always a nice little throwback. It's nice to be able to do a strat that's um, just as fast as a wind bomb, but different. As you can tell, it's not the most consistent one. So. Can't really recommend it. There it is. Um, it just 
feels like a nice change of pace after doing a lot of wind bombs, but still not gonna push it away from a 3 out of 5. Another 3 out of 5 across the board, Shrine. This might be a surprise to some of you, but Rota O for somebody that likes casual, uh, that likes puzzle shrines, was actually a really, really good experience. This, in my opinion, is a perfect use of space. It's such a small shrine, but there's like so many puzzles to it, to this one unit, that it feels so incredibly satisfying to slowly progress through it. I will say, I think all things considered, it is gonna be only a four out of five because the five out of five shrines are just that much better. And at the end of the day, it's just there. There are some pretty cool speedrun strats here that you don't really see much anymore, like this one to work the second time. There it is and then finish the shrine or you can just wind bump into it um which again is gonna end up being a three out of five your average speedrunning shrine but it will get a four out of five casually just because of how well it uses space and how fun it is actually to go through now we are at the trial of power calm yatag and this one is a massive one this shrine and i will talk about this first because it's going to give us a better overview will actually get a four out of five speedrunning wise for me simply for how satisfying it is to hit the right wind bomb one way to do this is by doing a specific turn wind bomb to get just enough height like this to reach the end of the shrine something about this is so satisfying that i cannot just give this a three out of five i always look forward to doing the shrine casually and this is mainly because of how much you skip i mean look at this shrine like how is this a shrine this is like seven shrines at once this is literally seven shrines at once we got an apparatus puzzle we got stasis puzzles bomb puzzles magnesis puzzles combat sections like this is literally a dungeon and i think i would feel bad to not give this a five out of five just purely by how much there is to do this is literally seven shrines at once and even though in terms of quality there might be ones that have better puzzles i think there is just too much to do there is too much to do it's a giant shrine, so many chests, so many puzzles. The trial of the po trial of power is something that people remember just simply for how huge it is. But we made it to Katachuki, which, no surprise, is gonna be a 2 out of 5 shrine. We talked about this. It's a test of strength. It's a minor one at that. Yes, it's next to castle. Doesn't matter. Let's get it out of the way. It's a 2 out of 5. Now we made it to Hila Rao, which is commonly known as the Flower Blight Ganon Shrine, where you do not want to touch the flowers. Oh. Otherwise, Magda gets very mad at you. I wouldn't really consider this too much of a puzzle, even though it's memorable for both casual playthrough and speedrunning. I mean, one of my first YouTube videos that ever did well was about touching these flowers as quick as possible. But let's talk about the interior instead. And in my opinion, this is basically Kaya One, a shrine that we had earlier done right. It's much less annoying. You can either wait for these rafts and simply cross the water this way, or you can use Cryonis, which is something that the speedrun does. Unfortunately, the wind bomb inside the shrine hasn't been very consistent. If you do get it right, because it's a turn wind bomb, you can actually fly to the very end of the shrine, but sometimes you hit the ceiling like that and lose time, which makes the rating for this go down quite a bit. I never really look forward to doing this shrine in the speedrun, just because I know how easily it can fail. So this will actually be a two out of five speedrunning wise. Casually, this is actually fine enough you have to blow up these bricks at the very end and basically ride the rafts over that being said i think i'm missing something is this really your average brother the wild shrine it is early on into the game but at the end of the day you just literally walk over rafts and then you blow up a wall yes there's extra chests in there but i'm almost tempted to give this a two out of five in casual playthrough as well just because water isn't necessarily fun to maneuver you end up waiting quite a bit and i feel like something is missing i think it's actually fair to give this a two out of five across the board for the speedrun side because it's not very consistent and for the casual side because it feels almost kind of incomplete. We made it to Vargo Cutter, another shrine pretty early in the game, pretty close to the Great Plateau, next to a stable. And this one is great, in my opinion. In my opinion, this is the quintessential Breath of the Wild shrine. It's not very complicated whatsoever, but it just uses normal game mechanics and runes to come up with clever solutions. You can try to take this entire stack of crates at once, and bring it over to the other metal slab to build um, your tower and then fly over to the end of the monk which is obviously pretty convenient it's just re i think it's just rewarding um you especially if you just made it off the great plateau you've just learned how to use magnesis you can build your tower and fly to the end of the shrine this is another one of those shrines by the way where there is multiple different ways to beat it what i'm doing here is probably not something that most people did i think a lot of people didn't get the blocks up here and they instead made a bridge 
using this slab um, and the tower next to the monk and uh, completed the shrine this way. But yes, you can also just jump over like this to finish the shrine. It's a quintessential Breath of the Wild shrine. Three out of five for me. I like it a lot, um, but it's nothing too special. And speedrunning wise, we got our classic wind bomb. It's kind of fun to do because you essentially intentionally slam Link against the wall to then make it to the end. But also three or five across the board, solid shrine. We got Bosch Kala next, and Bosch Kala is an absolute classic. It's probably most people's first shrine of the Great Plateau, mine included. You make your way towards Kakariko because that's kind of what the game wants you to do, and you find the shrine on the side of the road, and it does its job well for that. I really like the shrine because it felt so different. In the Great Plateau, we had our tutorial-based shrines that had us use a bunch of runes, but this one is entirely different. It suddenly uses wind gusts and you use your paraglider. It almost is like the paraglider tutorial shrine, which makes sense because the paraglider is the thing that you get on the end of the Great Plateau. So it almost feels like very intentional to be put right here. A lot of people's first shrine, you know how to use the paraglider. Um, there's this nice precise jump you can do here to get to this chest. For some reason, I saw a lot of people struggle with this jump. I guess it's relatively precise and you have to kind of push your comfort. I think in a speedrun, this shrine is surprisingly good, mainly because there's many options. You can glide through to the end. You can wind bomb through it from the start, which isn't very consistent. At some point, people kind of memed about the shrine and just ran through it as fast as possible. It actually is definitely a memorable speedrun shrine. Uh, speedruns of the game would notice that no major glitches run for this shrine has been surprisingly optimized. It's actually fun to watch. Four out of five for speedruns because of that reason. And three out of five because it's a good paraglider tutorial shrine and pretty solid casually. All right, we had Yanaga, a shrine in the middle of Lake Hylia. I know a lot of people like this one, me included. I will have to talk about a speedrunning strat that I think is really cool because I found it. Otherwise, also known as the Michael Bay strat. Essentially perform a wind bomb and then mid wind bomb shoot a bomb arrow against the ceiling, place the second bomb, the bomb arrow goes off, explodes the wall, and you fly to the very end. Unfortunately, this is no longer the fastest strat. Casually, however, the shrine is pretty cool as well. Um, what you essentially do, and this is not really a casual strat, I just like doing this, you can aim here and throw the round bomb in. You get a round bomb below the block, you place a square bomb on top, you blow up the round bomb, blow up the square bomb, and then you can get up there yourself. It's pretty fun to do, and it makes you feel pretty smart. In my opinion, another good showcase of your classic Breath of the Wild shrine, and it's gonna be a three out of five for me. Uh, in speedruns, because of the Michael Bay strat and different options that you can do here, it's actually gonna be rated even higher. This is actually gonna be a four out of five for me in a speedrun sense. And we finally made it to the first test of strength that's gonna be a three out of five, at least casually, because there is a little bit more to it. We got the string of power, which is awesome to first obviously discover. Not only it being a Skyward Sword reference, it's just a cool location. You need to get a Dinral part to even access it. And then it almost feels weird that this is the one Dragon Spring that's not a Blessing Shrine. But it makes sense with it being the Spring of Power. You have to actually prove your power. So a major test of strength here made a lot of sense. And even though this won't improve it in a speedrunning sense, and we still will give it a 2 out of 5 speedrunning wise, casually at least it's pushed up to a 3 just because of its unique location and the unique circumstances in terms of experience casually. Now we are at Kaokeo. This shrine is hidden below a random slab kind of close to Rito village. And this is a big one. Casually, I hated this shrine. You may already know why. This is not a shrine for someone that's a little bit impatient. And honestly, I don't even think this is related to being patient. What you essentially do in this shrine is you grab a Korok leaf and then steer your little like spaceship through the shrine. Fortunately, my inventory is full right now, but I happen to have a coral leaf on me just to show you what I mean. I don't even want to really go in it just because of how much I dislike this one. Uh, essentially, you spawn your little raft in here and then you fly around. There's guardians that shoot at you. It's just not a good time. I'm not a big fan of this. Let's actually go through the first part of the shrine. I think this is gonna be. I think this is gonna be a one out of ten for me. Uh, one out of five for me. So this part is fine. You just maneuver your ship over to the other side, but I, oh, oh, okay, perfect showcase already. Uh, starting with some frustration. Obviously, I could take care of these guardians right now, but this would already be 
annoying. For the sake of showing it off, let me see if I can wind bomb over to the other side. So I don't have to uh, get another raft. But the real problem begins here. You make your way into the second part of the shrine, you see that there's a door right there, but you don't have the key yet. And this, even though this is a pretty big shrine, it almost gives you, again, some dungeon vibes. It's just that the gameplay itself is pretty much like this. You basically have to maneuver your raft around these spikes. It's not a fun time. It's only 2 out of 5 when it comes to, using, uh, to speedruns, because even in speedruns, it's not a fun time. All things considered, I guess just because there is so much going on, I feel like I would feel bad to uh, give it a 1 out of 5, just because some people maybe like the spaceship gameplay. But I can't in good faith give this better than 2 out of 5, casually. So that's what it's gonna get for me, 2 out of 5. Also 2 out of 5 speedrunning, because Windbomb can be annoying. It's a big memorable shrine, but it's gonna end up getting a 2 out of 5 for me. We made our way to Kakariko. This is Talo Naik, and it's a test of strength. It is a tutorial test of strength, which, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense that it exists. It teaches you game mechanics like flurry rushes, parries, etc. I honestly think getting the flurry rush against the Guardian is not the best way to cheat shit with how like erratic they attack, but it makes sense that it's in the game. This is the other test of strength that I'm gonna give a 3 out of 5 because it should be in the game and it does what it's supposed to do. But that's pretty much just it. Uh, for speedruns, you do exec almost exactly the same that you would do in any other test of strength. So it will again end up with a 2 out of 5. Nothing special. But let's talk about Lagnaroki while we're here. This shrine is very, very tricky. So casually, I will actually give this a high rating, a 4 out of 5, because the experience I had with this. When I first played the game, I saw this pedestal, and basically my entire playthrough, I was wondering how to access the shrine. Until finally, I uh, happened to complete the quests that you have to complete to actually enter this shrine, Lagnaroki. Uh, eventually, the orb gets stolen from Impa's house, and you have to follow this Yiga Blade Master, which doesn't really feel too stealthy. It doesn't feel like Oki or whatever to be able to enter the shrine. Then it's a blessing shrine. For speedrunning, this shrine is awful. Either you do a buffered SCW, which is a very annoying strategy to do. Nobody likes doing it, despite how fast it is. Or it's a shrine where you just essentially end up waiting. The only benefit of it is that it's essentially acting as a pee break in some longer runs where you have to do the quest for it. Which is probably the only reason I would push it to a 2, but honestly I won't. It would actually get a 1 out of 5 for me. It's a shrine no one likes um, in the speedrunning scene and buffered SCWs can be extremely unforgiving. So after all, it will only get a 1 out of 5 for me for speedrunning. Casually though, 4 out of 5 good experience and we already made our way to Kamu Rock where you have to shoot one of these statues at night time their eyes will be glowing not really a hard puzzle probably something that people will figure out relatively quick but let's talk about the shrine itself quite different to do the shrine casually than speedrunning wise in speedruns you do a simple wind bomb to reach the monk this was one of the first shrines that wind bombs were first uh, introduced in because the casual strat used to be the speedrun strat so speedrunning wise, we got our classic average 3 out of 5. For the casual strat, I'm honestly not exactly sure what the game is, what the game wants you to do. I've tried to do the shrine literally in several ways. Um, the way we used to do it is by essentially just standing on this wheel and then waiting for the right moment to jump off. I'm not sure if there's something I'm missing, something else you're supposed to do. Um, I know you can use stasis to make this entire contraption stop moving. The way that you use stasis in speedruns is by actually using it on, or used to do, used to do it, is by using it on the laser and then jumping over. I don't think it's that, it's a cool shrine at all. I actually quite dislike it, even though it feels like a big, like, contraption that you're kind of moving through. Even with this strat, I can't really give this more than a 2 out of 5. Casually, it's not a great shrine at all. But for speedruns, the wind bomb now is fine. 3 out of 5 speedrun, 2 out of 5. Casual for Kamu Rock. Now we are at the Toto Sa shrine. A pretty well hidden shrine. And like I said earlier, this could be for some people their first experience with an apparatus shrine. I said earlier that for the golf shrine, it's my favorite apparatus shrine. That's actually wrong because this is my favorite apparatus shrine. I think this one is a good way to use motion controls, especially when it comes to casual playthroughs. You use it here to build a bridge, 
here to use a staircase and then all the way over there to kind of build your path using a pretty convoluted puzzle. So I think this is a good shrine. I like this one a lot. It's probably the best motion control shrine we have. And all things considered, I would actually give this a 4 out of 5. And I would also give this a 4 out of 5 for speedruns for two reasons. Both speedrunning strats here are incredibly satisfying. The first one is a wind bump, which just happens to get you a perfect angle to the end of the shrine. Something about this angle here is so satisfying that I really love doing it. The thing is, the strats before wind bombs is honestly um, even cooler. What we used to do is we used to place the staircase in this very suspicious, weird way and then jump onto the middle staircase. For some reason, if you then shoot a bomb arrow against the bottom of the staircase, it blasts the staircase up, making you, play, uh, making you fly perfectly towards the end of the shrine. And in times before wind bombs, this strat was lit. This was like the coolest strat out there. So uh, definitely a good time. Good memories. Four out of five across the board for Totosa. All right, we're getting towards the tail end here, the last 30-ish shrines. We are now at Ha the Hama, a shrine next to Dueling Peak Stable. And inside is something I talked about earlier when I talked about Cryonis, a shrine that's basically a second Cryonis tutorial. It starts off by using Cryonis on these waterfalls here as stepping stones, which kind of conditions you into thinking, oh, I can use Cryonis onto the waterfalls. Again, I talked about this earlier. I feel like they could have included this in Cryonis. But we get it here. I will use the speedrun strategy real quick, where you wind bomb against the wall and then land on this structure to then wind bomb into the cage. This will get a two out of three for me, because for some reason, Every time you do this wind bomb, your square bomb still sits back here. And it's so easy to forget. I cannot tell you how many times I unintentionally tried to do a second wind bomb, but I couldn't. And that literally makes it a below average shrine for speedruns. Two out of five. But um, casually, this is pretty cool. You essentially use Cryonis to build a path for this orb to roll over. The way you do it is something like this. You make it bounce against the first Cryonis block, then make it roll down here jump over this one and it'll roll towards the end and finish it. Feels satisfying to do. I like the shrine a lot. Uh, wouldn't quite give it a 4 out of 5 because it's still relatively basic, but it's a nice average shrine. Decent amount of puzzles. That's harder hammer. Next up, Re Dahi. Unfortunately, this shrine is a 1 out of 5 for speedruns. There is strategies that allow you to do the shrine relatively fast, but I think very little shrines are hated as much. We already talked about some of the least favorite shrines for speedrunners. This is one of them, and the reason why is the same as usual. The ceiling is very low. Now, if you get the right wind bomb, you can do a square first wind bomb and get all the way to the end, like this. Unfortunately, this won't always work in a speedrun. And many times you'll end up hitting the ceiling and then falling down early and losing time. Fortunately, there's other strats you can do now that are more consistent, but at the same time, they are slower. So you end up in this weird scenario where you either go fast and risky or slow but safe. It's one of the most hated shrines of all time. Casually though, it's kind of fun. It's similar to the Sheem the Ghost Shrine that we did earlier with the two buttons. This last puzzle can be a little bit frustrating because it's relatively timing precise, but I'd say it does a good job at uh, testing timing. I'm pretty sure the name of the shrine, shrine is literally called like Timing is Critical. And really is, uh, apparently it's so critical that I can't even beat it casually until now. But I think it's solid. Um, it essentially has these three puzzles that get more difficult and more difficult. It does what it's supposed to do. Three out of five casual, but one out of five speedrun. Get the shrine away from me. Now, the next two shrines are best rated uh, at the same time because they're essentially the same shrine. Just um, they, they kind of only, only work together. The next two shrines are the Dueling Peaks shrines, Shea Vanir and Shea Venath down here. I already had some people say in my chat right now that they did not like these shrines. And I personally kind of disagree. I will keep that in mind. But what I thought this uh, the, the game wanted you to do here and this made me feel pretty smart, is um, once you are in both shrines, you figure out that essentially the way these orbs are set up here is the solution for the other shrine. 
and the other way around. And the way I solved, and I thought the game wanted you to solve it, is that you go up here and then you use the um, screenshot feature of the, the Switch, essentially, to make yourself a screenshot to have the solution for the other shrine ready. Uh, so what I did is I essentially made a screenshot, went to the other shrine, took the screenshot, and then uh, solved the shrines that way. And that made me feel pretty smart. I was like, oh, I'm using game mechanics to solve the shrine. Pretty cool. I'd say for that reason, I will still give it a 3 out of 5, because it gave me what I want from a Breath of the Wild shrine, which is feeling smart and solving a puzzle. But I can definitely see people not enjoying this one too much, because it still feels kind of tedious to do. And I think there's a fair point to push it down to a 2. But these two shrines will be a three across the board for me particularly. I liked um, figuring out using the screenshot feature. And like you just saw, for both of these shrines, you can do exactly the same wind bomb to get to the end of them. Next up is Korkana Tarn. And usually the shrine is encased in a big stone. The way you break the stone is by waiting for lightning to strike. It will then break the stone. You can access the shrine. In speedruns these days, I need to talk about this quickly. We have ways to skip using um, lightning here by going to the shrine so fast that the the rock can't load in or by clipping into the rock which makes the shrine a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun these days unfortunately sometimes the clip doesn't really cooperate or you don't get the rock to be unloaded so that adds a little bit of frustration and because this is just a blessing shrine after all we talked about this before speedrunning wise this will be a two out of five casually i can't really give this more than a two out of five either Despite the fact that we have the Song of Storms playing from Cuss and people probably really enjoyed that and probably enjoyed that moment of being like, oh, I got hit by lightning or oh, I used like a metal weapon to break this. I don't think it improves this enough to say, oh yeah, this is like an average or above average shrine just because blessings are just blessings. Some people probably enjoy them, like I just read in chat and that's fair. I think some people were like, oh. Don't mind getting a free gift, uh, especially if there's like a nice little throwback. I'm not including rewards itself, even though you get a pretty useful reward from this shrine on my rating. So to me, this is just a blessing shrine that's not further really improved by getting in there. So it will be a 2 out of 5 across the board. We made it to Shoda Sa now, another shrine behind a waterfall. Sounds familiar? That's because we had that earlier at the one in the Lanayru Promenade. This one is in Farron, and for some reason it's raining behind the waterfall. Thank you, Breath of the Wild. This won't really play a role though for our rating, as we're going to be rating the shrine itself. This is not a blessing, we got a puzzle shrine here. And there's quite a few um, interesting ways to do this run, uh, this one in the speed run. One I want to talk about in particular. You can just do a wind bomb here, which is unfortunately a little bit inconsistent. So usually I would say two out of five, but because there's a really cool strat here, where you jump up this and intentionally and I actually didn't do it right because I blew up the bomb too early but you use what I was talking about in the bomb shrine earlier basically intentionally getting into the ragdoll state by getting hit by the bomb and then using the piston to catapult yourself over let's try it again kind of like this this will blast you over here where if you want to you can pick up some ice arrows and then you can do a consistent wind bomb from here over there or do um, one of those bomb launches over, or, and this is actually a pretty unique one, place a cryonis block here, and then perform something called a scope clip, where you use the scope, we used that at the beginning, at the Shrine of Resurrection, to literally uh, skip through the gate and finish the shrine this way. So because of those many solutions and many cool ways to do it, this is actually a shrine that I really like in speedruns, and it's going to get a 4 out of 5 for me because of its different ways to solve it, um, you can just go for the windbow itself, but do you have options? You can get quick ice arrows on your way. Now for casual playthrough, the shrine is again pretty timing based. It can be a bit frustrating because you have to reload if you basically quote unquote run out of ammunition. The first shot here is not too bad. All you basically have to do is time your shots in a way that it lands in this little alcove, which I actually just barely messed up, it seems like. Uh, that was kind of close. Um, technically, you can also abuse Cryonis blocks a little bit and get them in this way. From this, you basically get a crate and then get to do um, a second part where you have to time your shot even better. This part is a little bit annoying, but again, this is something that people might not know. You can abuse stays here a little bit, uh, basically wait 
until now and then get a free shot so all things considered i think the shrine is fine i have it pretty fondly in my memory that might also be because i'm biased in terms of speed running you can also technically use stasis to sync up these platforms making this a little bit better they're a little bit more synced up right now i'd say it's a three out of five for me your classic breath of the wild shrine with a unique twist and i like the speed run for it all right we're at shy town sorry shy Uto. shrine names are quite difficult Another shrine next to the stable, and this is what I was talking about earlier. What I liked here is that the game had conditioned you into knowing that a shrine is next to a stable, but there is no shrine here. So the shrine ended up being behind a rock. I really liked finding this shrine because I was like, I knew it. There had to be a shrine next to a stable. Now, casually, this is a shrine that's pretty much centered around stasis. You basically use stasis at the right time to make these scales go in your favor. For this last one, I do remember, it took me a long time to figure out. I actually, to this day, am not exactly sure what you're supposed to do here. There's multiple things to do. I think you can technically take a metal crate and use it as kind of like a catapult. You can also, if you want to, do this and just run over, right? I don't think that's what the game wanted you to do. Uh, is there even a metal chest here? I thought there was. Wasn't... Yeah, this chest is like metal, so I thought you can use a catapult here. All things considered, I think it's an alright shrine. I guess, like I said, there's multiple cheese ways. You can literally just do this. Like, I don't even have speed food. I just ran up the, uh, the, the platform. And for speedrunning, you would just use uh, a wind bomb here, which is fairly consistent. So for speedrunning, it's going to be an easy 3 out of 5. I think... I would be tempted to give this one a two, but for the simple reason that I like the memory of finding this shrine because it wasn't quite obvious, even though it was next to a shrine, I think this is gonna be another example of a three across the board to me. And keep in mind, three is obviously a quite common rating here because it's your average shrine. And I think Shayuto uh, fits that criteria. Next up, we got Tava Jin, a shrine that's basically centered around killing three Hinoxes. Um, I have not killed a single Hinox in this playthrough because it is technically possible to land on their tummies and then just grab the orb and bring it back. Now, this is something that people casually probably didn't do. They did do those three boss fights. And I think it has some charm to it that we have like the three brothers storyline here. And combat is usually more fun if it's not just the same test of strength. I like that it's like three different strength of Hinoxes as well. And overall, I think the shrine has a nice theme going on. I would have preferred if it wasn't just a blessing, but I guess it makes sense because you do work quite hard to do it. But usually a blessing pushes it down. I think this is one of the shrines where the experience improves the blessing enough, though, for it to be a 3 out of 5 casually. Normally, like I said, blessings would be at the level 2 out of 5, but I think this sort of content improves enough to be a 3 out of 5. That being said, in a speedrun, the shrine is only a 2 out of 5. It's a blessing and the speedrunning here is very boring because even though you can steal the Hinox's orb, you end up just walking the orb all the way back to these platforms and it just feels tedious and slow. And tedious and slow is not something we enjoy in speedruns. So unfortunately, in runs, this won't be improved to a 3 out of 5. But it's alright. Uh, can't hate on it too much. Because after all, it does go by quite quick. That being said, we're going to be entering Lordine Village now and reach Ya Rin. Another shrine centered around scales. I think this is going to be the last one now. I already talked about this twice. I'm a little bit uh, torn about this one, especially in the speedrunning rating. But for casual, um, it's a 3 out of 5. I can already give this away. This is, again, I feel like we noticed this trend. Your classic, Breath of the Wild Shrine. We get introduced to a mechanic at the start, which is like, hey, you can use scales. Um, then we get a second puzzle a a about it, and then a third one that basically proves, uh, tests our game knowledge once more. Now, in speedruns, I'm torn because there is a wind bomb, but I don't like it because you don't clear the entire shrine with it. Essentially, what you do is you just clear the first part and you have to run to the end and it doesn't feel fun. It feels slow, but there is a really cool super speed strat where you essentially ride one of those blocks from the start all the way to the end. It's something that will not really happen in your normal run, but in an ideal speed run, it would happen, which would push it back to a 3 out of 5. But because this wind bomb is kind of lame, I'm considering 2 out of 5, but I think the potential for the shrine is too big to give it a 2. I think I will end up with a rating of 3 out of 5. I don't like the wind bomb, but I like the alternative strats. Now we made our way to Kaya. It's a shrine basically centered around the Mirror of Twilight, um, which evidently is this 
monument that you take pictures of. Taking the pictures is a little tedious casually. One of them is all the way over there. And then there's even another puzzle you do here, which is not too hard. Essentially, you just crouch down and the shrine comes out of the ground. So there's that. And then, and I was surprised because this feels like the shrine that's a blessing, but it's not. It's another shrine puzzle. And I was pleasantly surprised because usually I enjoy shrines. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of just getting a blessing reward. Essentially, you sit on these moving platforms and you have to crouch and basically move accordingly to not get thrown off. You have to time your arrow shot on the right here. Overall, this is a pretty good casual experience. I just di didn't like how tedious it felt to get the Mirror of Twilight pieces. I think I'm just so pleasantly surprised by the fact that this wasn't a blessing that I'm tempted to give this a four out of five. But I think finding the Mirror of Twilight pieces, no, actually the reason that pushes me to give this a three is that it's actually broken. I'm not sure if you encounter this in your own playthrough, but it's actually possible to take a picture from the Mirror of Twilight and not have it count. And that's super frustrating, especially if it's one of the pieces that's further away. This can be frustrating in speedruns and outside of speedruns. So all things considered, it will only be a three after all. For speedruns, um, it will be a two just because of how tedious it is to go around and take those pictures and then wait for the cutscene. This wind bomb here is all right. I'd say casual because the experience is there. Three out of five and speedrun, I will end up with a two out of five. Now, Muvo Jim, even though this is literally my favorite location in the game, if you watch my second channel or even my main channel before, you know this because I used this as like a B right back screen in the past. I cannot use this for the rating of the shrine itself. And despite the fact that I love this location, it's another test of strength. A modest test of strength, pretty forgettable. It's gonna be a two out of five, like pretty much all of the other ones. But I did wanna at least give a shout out to the shrine's location, especially at like sunset. It just looks really pretty here. Right now we don't have the best weather in game. But I did want to at least say this. That being said, we have another test of strength right here. And I literally have a clip on my Twitch channel, like five years old. Because what I did is I did this shrine and I was like losing all of my weapons. I didn't have a single weapon left. And I remember vividly gliding down here and being like, oh man, hopefully this is not another test of strength. And I entered it and it just said... Major test of strength. Uh, yeah, that wasn't a fun time, but uh, you know my stance to do to these tests of strength. Strengths. This one is just sitting out on the open. Thankfully, this is really close to a much better shrine. So even though this one will be a classic two out of five rating, this is very close to Eventide Island. Now, Eventide Island is probably gonna be maybe our only but definitely our first five out of five in every single way shrine this shrine is a unique experience in the game that you only get once when it comes to casual playthrough is it stressful and anxi anxiety inducing scary yes but it's definitely something that you'll only experience a single time Thankfully, you are not losing your own weapons, and even though this might take you a little bit to first do in your casual playthrough, I think this experience is so unique and so good that there is no way that I won't give this a 5 out of 5. It just stands out so much, even though obviously there's just a blessing waiting for us at the end. Um, it's simply too good of uh, an experience, at least the first time you play. Uh, for speedrunning, the reason this is a 5 out of 5, even though this is a blessing, is just because of how much there is to do. If you've never done this, trust me, sit down, go to speedrun.com and look up a speedrun for Eventide Island. If you go to the individual level leaderboard of Breath of the Wild, you can find speedruns that are just focusing on getting the shrine out of the ground as quick as possible. And they are nothing short of incredible. There are strats like bomb arrow usage on an orb, all the way down here to make the orb literally fly across the entire island into the right opening. Uh, the craziest wind bombs, the craziest movement strats, uh, the craziest slides that you'll ever see. This shrine is incredibly optimized in speedruns. Unfortunately, in normal runs, you can't really go for these strats because of how inconsistent they are. But it's still pretty fun to maneuver through this island quickly. Sometimes it can be annoying. If you go here at night, you're pretty much guaranteed a thunderstorm. But I think I would just, it would just feel wrong to give this anything but a double 5 out of 5. Uh, but now I'm at Ak Vakvaut. 
It's a shrine next to Rito village, which uh, has a ton of fans. The idea is to organize these wind gusts in a way that every single fan is moving at the same time. I feel like in my casual playthrough, I ended up just using trial and error here because it can be annoying to kind of like have an overview at what's actually going on. So sometimes you'll be hitting the wind gust, run back up, look back down again, go back down again, run back up again. So I think I ended up actually using mostly trial and error, which is not necessarily what you want to be doing. Um, and it's just a single room of a shrine. I, I think because of its nature and how people will probably default to trial and error, I think this will actually be a two out of five shrine. There is some extra stuff back here, some extra puzzling that allows you to get extra chests. One pro tip, you can literally place a bomb next to this fan, which will open this gate for just enough to get the chest. In case if you ever don't want to do this. For speedruns, this is a big surprise. A shrine with a low ceiling. So wind bombing here can be extremely annoying. Thankfully, there's slide strats where you can slide over to the other side and jump over to make it a little bit more consistent. But because of how easy it is to lose time here, if you're trying to go as fast as possible, which is going to be to do a wind bomb like this, and this is the perfect showcase, I will rank this below average. Two out of five across the board for Aqua Quote for it being a little confusing and annoying casually and frustrating and easy to lose time at in speedruns. Next up we got Barida Nag. This shrine you get out of the ground by shooting a pedestal at a very precise timing. Uh, you basically wait until the sun is making this heart appear as a shadow on the ground and then you shoot a fire on it. Once you figure that out it's obviously not too hard to do. That being said the interior of the shrine is one of the most fun uh, fun shrines in my opinion. The mechanic of this is used later in the DLC and if you missed it I'm not ranking DLC shrines here because they are so much better than the rest of the game. Can be tricky to get the shot just right to hit the button on the other side but I think it's a unique shrine. Pretty fun to do. I like this one. If you haven't seen it before you basically put down a bomb and then you use a cannon. Uh, here you have to then uh, time your shot right to actually open the door. It's, it's simple, but it's enjoyable. And it doesn't feel awful to make a mistake. Uh, we got another Quint Essential Breath of the Wild speedrunning shrine, a normal three out of five. One of the simplest shrines to skip with a wind bomb like this. So you don't have to do any cannon shooting. Even though this is an enjoyable um, mini game and you get to do a second one if you want the chest of the shrine, I don't think this is quite enough to push it into four out of five ter territory. I think this is another classic three out of five across the board. Let's move on to Volota though. This shrine stands out in both casual playthroughs and speedrunning. The reason it stands out in casual playthrough is because there's this huge quest attached to it. You can't even start this quest before beating the Divine Beast. And then you go through Rito Village, talk to all of these birds. You end up having to solve this puzzle here about the ancient Rito song. And then still, you don't get a blessing, but no, you get this huge shrine out of the ground that is its an entire own puzzle. Um, I was very confused that this one wasn't a blessing, again, specifically considering that some of the later shrines are blessing shrines, which seem like they would be much more intricate. Now, the problem for speedruns, which makes the shrine unfortunately a 2 out of 5, is this huge ladder, which to this day we still don't have a way to actually skip this ladder, and we just have to climb it. Doesn't matter as much for a casual playthrough. The reason the shrine stands out for speedrunning, by the way, is because it's another one of those shrines that used to be only obtainable when beating Divine Beast Var Meadow. You had to take a very long time to even enter this shrine. Thankfully, just like the Sansi Ray shrine, we have a, a way around this. Now, that being said, in speedruns, you fall down here, you do a mid air wind bomb to the end of the shrine. So, all things considered, two out of five. However, let's talk about it casually a little bit more because I um, will be giving this a 4 out of 5. The quest itself is mostly tedious. It feels cool to solve the puzzle with the song. And this shrine is, while it's relatively large in scale, not super interesting. It's essentially mostly revolving around controlling your paraglider. You end up grabbing a key uh, over here and then go to the final door. But I think because of how much there is to the shrine, it stands out enough for it to be at least a 4 out of 5 uh, when it comes to casual gameplay. 4 out of 5 casually, 2 out of 5 for speedruns. 
Now next up we got another blessing shrine and there is going to be a similar shrine to this one that unfortunately I can only give a 1 out of 5 casually. There's another one later that will get a 1 out of 5 casually and that's because it is a simple blessing hidden behind a rock. Yes, you can use the Sheikah sensor to find this one easier. And this is also going to be true for the other one I'm going to be talking about in a little bit, closer towards the end. But I just don't get it. Like, yes, the challenge for this shrine is exploring the world and eventually find it. But compared to the shrine we just did, where we do like a 20 minute quest to then do a full shrine, it just feels really sad to open a wall and do a blessing. Now, it won't be a 1 out of 5 in a speedrunning way because at least it's not annoying, but it will only be a 2 out of 5. We talked about this before, blessings are a 2 out of 5. If they're not improved in any way, they're gonna be a 2 out of 5. So it's a pretty low rated shrine. Yes, there's a good reward in here, but we said we're not rating rewards. So unfortunately, Tano Oa is gonna be a 2 out of 5 casually and a 1, uh, sorry, a 2 out of 5 for speedruns and a 1 out of 5 casually. After roasting a shrine casually though, we got Jitan Sami. And Jitan Sami is definitely up there with my favorite shrines casually. The reason being is this is the shrine at the Spring of Wisdom. And you'll see something pretty confusing right now, which is that I just entered the shrine, but Nadra is still here. This is because in speedruns, you can actually get a Nadra part from Hyrule Castle, simply use it to enter the shrine and move on. And this is actually not at all needed to progress the quest. But normally, in a casual playthrough, you come up here and you suddenly see a dragon. You're already stunned. And not only do you see the dragon, you get to fly around it and free it from matters. It's one of the most epic moments in the entire game just to get rewarded with a Blessing Shrine. And this is the sort of quest where a Blessing Shrine feels right. One of the best moments in the entire video game. Freeing Nadra getting the dragon part and getting the shrine five out of five easy i will actually rate this just uh, again two out of five for speedruns because it's just boring you have to sit through this cutscene of nadra you already have the dragon parts you put the dragon part into the water and you do the blessing it's not fun to do it's not annoying to do but it's below average for speedrunning purposes so speedrunning only two out of five pretty boring but amazing casually one of the top shrines in the game and I think pretty much everyone will agree. Shai Yuta is a shrine that starts underground. The way you get it out of the ground is by breaking particular rocks. I think this was pretty confusing. The idea is to basically merge these wind gusts together by breaking specific rocks and then riding the wind all the way over here to actually get the shrine out of the ground. One thing that's really annoying about this is it doesn't really care how much you used the wind gust. All that this pedestal checks is that when you touch it, you have the paraglider active. So technically doing this will get the shrine out of the ground. And I had some issues actually landing on this uh, specifically because I tried to land on it. So I used the paraglider and I press B, right, to land on it, but it doesn't work. It only works if you have the paraglider in your hand when you touch it. And that is a little annoying. Also breaking these rocks, in my opinion, was not... It was kind of confusing. It wasn't... It didn't make me feel smart. It again made me kind of feel like trial and error. And then it just ended up being a blessing shrine. Which, again, I don't like. Um, so unfortunately, this is going to be another 2 out of 5 across the board. In speedruns, the shrine is a little bit better because it can feel quite satisfying to break these rocks really quickly. But at the end of the day, it's a blessing shrine and you just end up watching a bunch of cutscenes. So I never really look forward to the shrine. It's a little bit more satisfying, but not enough to push it to the 3. We had too many shrines that are much better. So 2 out of 5 across the board for Shai Yota. Right, we made our way to Hiamiu. This is the very north of the map. And surprise, it's a test of strength. 2 out of 5. At this point, you shouldn't be surprised anymore. We talked about these tests of strength multiple, multiple times. Nothing is special about this, other than the fact that it's like in the very north, so it, it might feel kind of cool to first discover it, but hey, we talked about test of strings enough. Here, Miu is not an exception. Now we made it to To Cuomo. This is the great Hebra skeleton. This is pretty cool for multiple reasons. Casually, I will say I lost my mind trying to find this place because I didn't know where to enter. If you play the game casually and you have the Sheikah sensor active, you'll be running around the other side where I just was at Hia Miu and your Sheikah sensor is going to be going off, but there is no way to enter. This is because you enter on the other side by 
bringing a snowball and rolling it down against this door. Once you do that, you get greeted with this view. And obviously that's pretty cool. Um, it's a good casual experience, but finding it in the first place really pushed it down for me. And then you obviously end up with just a blessing. It would feel wrong to not at least give the shrine a three out of five. It's one of the better blessings in the game simply because of the experience, but finding it really made it worse for me. That being said, you can see the door for me is closed. That's because in speedruns, we are actually able to clip into the mountain on the opposite side and then make our way through an out of bounds section on top of this cave, clip in, and that just feels pretty cool. I really love showing this for people to the first time because I think a lot of people shared my casual experience and couldn't find the shrine. So I think the clip um, is pretty cool to show off. And even though this is just a blessing, it will also be improved to a three out of five. So to Cuomo is a shrine that usually wouldn't be three out of five level for me, but because of its unique uh, circumstances, it will be uh, reaching that three out of five mark. Can't give it any better though, but that's something for a blessing. Now, me, Ja, Rocky. I think some people like this shrine casually because of its unique way of acquiring it. You have to wait for a blood moon, stand here without any clothes on, and the door will open. Now, the problem is that casually you are not really aware of how blood moons work. If you still don't know how blood moons work, is they happen after a certain amount of in-game time that passes. Two hours and 48 minutes, a couple of seconds to be precise. So what I ended up doing casually is I made a campfire up there and slept like 60 times in a row, hoping that finally a blood moon would happen, but it doesn't. And obviously that's kind of counter counterintuitive. Intuitive. You would think that after a couple of nights a blood moon would happen, but in fact I was hurting myself by spending less in-game time. So the blood moon simply wouldn't happen. I really disliked this casually and was kind of left with a sour taste in my mouth. Eventually I did think it was kind of cool to get the blood moon out of the ground during a blood moon, sure. But then to be greeted with just a random modest test of strength, like at least give me a major test of strength. Like, I feel like that's just disrespectful. Like, a modest test of strength? Really? Anyway, I didn't really have a good time with this. And I will give this a 2 out of 5 casually. Despite the fact of that it's kind of cool to get it out of the ground with a blood moon. For speedruns, this is a 1 out of 5. This is one of the most annoying shrines in the game. For speedrunners. Now, we I, I said this before. We have a way now to enter this shrine while it's still underground, which is good for categories like all shrines, where you just have to get out of the spirit orbs. You do this with the shrine coordinate warp, which I've explained multiple times in my channel. You leave the shrine over there, make your way in here and enter the shrine. But in shrines like 100% or all quests, which I've been recently looking into, you need to get the quest. The quest is only completed by talking to Cus, who would be up here. Oh, look, it's Cus. Hi, Cus. Um, actually wait for the blood moon the problem is that even though it takes two hours and 50 minutes only to get a blood moon an all quest run is eight hours long in these eight hours you still barely spend enough in-game time for a blood moon to happen this means that in the future the blood moon will always restrict the fastest time you can get in something like an all quest speedrun. In fact, there's an all cus quest speedrun. This speedrun is all about doing every single cus quest in the game. And that speedrun is about spending as much time in the game as possible and going intentionally slow. So in that run, you ride a horse and ideally look up into the sky to not have any lag and you never want to pause the game to make sure that you get the blood moon as early as possible. Really stupid and it ruins a lot of things in a speedrun scenario. So unfortunately this is a 1 out of 5 for speedruns and a 2 out of 5 because of blood moon mechanics that are not really apparent to casual players. That's my thoughts on this one. Now Goma Asag should not be a surprise to you at this point. This is going to be the final test of strength that we're going to talk about and by no surprise it's a 2 out of 5. Yes, it's technically covered in ice blocks. And yes, it's technically at Hebra Peak. That's all cool and stuff. Unfortunately, it doesn't improve the shrine. It's still a 2 out of 5. It's a major test of strength, sure. And there's like a frozen moblin in this block, which is a funny little surprise. But it's not going to save the shrine's rating. And uh, we are going to stick with the 2 out of 5 for this one. We had two test of strengths um, that were slightly better. But you know my stance about them. 
You might disagree. Let's move on to Lano Ko. And this one, I actually have to talk about quite a bit. Now, I am not kidding you that I learned this year how you are supposed to enter this shrine. This shrine is Lano Ko. And I found it, it's a blessing shrine, by simply going through the water, taking some damage, and then getting a free blessing. And it was like, huh? Why is this the easiest shrine in the game to get? And I'm sure a lot of other people had that same experience because you can literally see it. And the Sheikah sensor will obviously yell at you that it's here. So I was extremely confused when I found out that this is just a blessing. Which is why my casual experience with the shrine is a 1 out of 5. I was like so shocked and almost angry. Like why is this so easy? Why do I work so hard for other shrines when I still have to actually solve a puzzle? Now I literally just the other day found out how you're supposed to do the shrine. And let me know if you knew this. I I'm actually curious if other people found the shrine this way. But the way you're supposed to enter the shrine is by going to the top of this river. And you go to this suspicious looking tree, which is right next to the water. And then you are supposed to ride this tree down the stream until it reaches the shrine. Um, this is actually set up perfectly to um, go down the waterfall and it will then enter the cave that the shrine is in. The reason I'm pretty confident that this was the supposed way to do this is because there's other locks that are inside the cave for you to leave the cave again, which look exactly the same. This is why I'm pretty confident that they thought, oh, this could be cool. They're riding down this like cold river on the log and then they perfectly enter the shrine. And I will say this makes me feel a little bit better about the shrine because this is at least kind of cool. And you can see this is literally perfectly set up to reach the shrine. I'm just so sure that so many other people had the same experience that I had where they just swam in and they were like, why the hell is this a blessing? Uh, that being said, the log improves it a little bit for me um, and I will actually give it a two out of five casual experience for the lucky people that ended up finding the shrine this way because it makes it feel much cooler. Again, this is what I was talking about, right? Same tree. They happen to be here already. You're supposed to use them to leave. But I'm sure not many people encounter the shrine this way. For speedruns, it's a two out of five as well. It's a simple blessing shrine. You know the deal by now. Let's go over to G Hara. And it's a fun one. You uh, are supposed to find the right track for a snowball to reach this door down here. As you can see, the door is already down for me. Now, there is speedrun ways where you can use one of these snowballs, throw them up the hill, and then use stasis to actually break the door. There's actually quite a few speedrunning ways. The only thing I didn't like about this is that it felt pretty trial and error E and Hebra. What I mean by that is, you see it right now, Hebra tends to be super foggy, so you actually don't really see what's going on. So sometimes you end up throwing snowballs down here and then just hope. Eventually the door will open, but it could feel cooler if Hebra wasn't always this foggy. Unfortunately, it is. I think it's a decent way to enter a shrine, and thankfully, it's not just a blessing. Um, if this was just a blessing, this would be a below average shrine, but it isn't. And I kind of like the mechanics of this shrine. The first part is obviously pretty easy. You shoot down one of these ropes, and just to give this away, the speedrun strat is a simple wind bomb, three out of five material. But this part here is pretty cool. I don't know how people did this, but I felt like pretty smart when I did this. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other people do this. I don't even know if there's another way to do this, do this but essentially you stay at first, then you cut the rope, boom. Uh, maybe there's another way to like make it swing into the middle, but I thought this was cool. And casually, despite the difficulties of potentially getting in, this will still be a three out of five shrine to me. I also like the location. These doors look pretty epic. And for speedruns, um, I will give it a three out of five as well, because there's a cool strat to show to people with the snowball strat to open the door and the um, shrine itself is decent, fast, satisfying, easy wind bomb. Now we are getting to the actual final four shrines in the game. Next up, Rin Uya. And I teased this earlier. This is one of the shrines I spent the most time ever in because I made a dedicated video about the shrine, which could already tell you that I'm probably liking it. The shrine is next to the snowfield stable and it's kind of like similar to Sharda Noor, the shrine that we saw on the on top of Hebra Peak and uh, next to the, the little um, shield surfing hut. This was the exactly 40 ways to be the shrine in Breath of the Wild video. 
I love this one a lot because it's a simple shrine in concept. Um, you're supposed to again guide the wind so that this orb will end up here. But there is so many ways to beat the shrine and I'm almost sure that no one in this chat or on YouTube right now, a lot of you may have had completely different solutions to the shrine. Some of you may have thrown it in. Some of you may have used stasis. Some of you may have built a track. Some of you may have used one of those blocks to ride up. Some of you may have wind bombed. Some of you may have used bow and arrow. Some of you may have used stasis on the wind turbine, which is a pretty unique way. Like this. And then waited for stasis to run out. Made their way over. There's just so much that makes the shrine good. Like the timing that you have to be on top of this the second the orb lands in the pedestal. It's one of the reasons that the shrine is really good. Uh, we've done ways of clipping through the ceiling to enter the shrine. Check out my video if you haven't yet. <laughs> 50, uh, sorry, 40 ways to beat the shrine. It just goes to show why this is a great shrine. It's solid in the sense that it has infinite creativity. I will only give it a 4 out of 5 casually just because I think the 5 out of 5 shrines are a more memorable experience. But yeah, I will give it a 4 out of 5 for the infinite creativity that you can use inside. Now that being said, for speedruns, it's a 3 out of 5, you simply just win pop up. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the fastest way to do it, but it's consistent and it's solid. Now, this is going to be Monyatoma, which is pretty unique in the sense that I have a strat here that I really like that's unfortunately slower. Normally, this would be a 3 out of 5 because you can just win them to the end, but there's one strat that pushes it to a 4. You stand next to the fence, you jump, you attack, and the orb flies over perfectly. I I really like the reaction that people have when they see this for the first time. It's not as impressive anymore with how much the game has grown, but it's really fun to do because of how much it really simplifies the shrine. Casually, this is also kind of fun. You use a lot of these pistons to set up your shrine orb to basically make it fly across the shrine just correctly to go past these blocks and go in. I had fun with this one. I'd say this is a 3 out of 5 casually, but for speedrunning, it will just be pushed to that 4 out of 5 just for that specific strat. You can disagree with me, that's fine. I guess I'm pretty biased when it comes to that, but I'm a big fan of this one. Now we made our way to um, Mark Noran. This one will actually score very poorly. This is another example close to the one that we saw in the snow region, where we have a blessing shrine simply waiting for us behind a rock. And I do hear sometimes that people are saying, it took me a long time to find this. Maybe these people didn't have the Sheikah sensor on. I can't blame them because the Sheikah sensor is annoying. But if you walk around here, you'll hear the Sheikah sensor and you see a random rock in the middle of the wall. And then you think, surely this is going to be a big shrine and it's a blessing. Um, again, I feel like this is the perfect example. Like we literally break blocks to get into the shrine. Why could the interior of this shrine not be the interior of Toyasa, the shrine in the thunderstorm, where you also break blocks. Like, they could have just swapped them. And I think it would have just improved shrines in general. Because you have to do so much more to actually get the shrine into the thunderstorm. But I don't know. That's what they ended up doing. And this is a very underwhelming shrine in every single way to me, uh, for me casually. I, I feel like it doesn't even feel that good to find it because it's so random. It's not in a cool location either. It's just in a wall. Like, maybe you laugh about it and then you get a blessing. But, like, I really can't give this anything but a 1, casually. Like, it's just a bad shrine. Sorry. For speedruns, it's alright. It's a fast shrine, it's a blessing, 2 out of 5. We had this scenario happen multiple times. It's kind of fun to get here, but I can't really use that as a rating. That being said, we are finally at the final shrine. Now, I cannot help but give this shrine... And this is kind of weird, but I feel like I cannot help but give this shrine a 5 out of 5, even though for some reason it's raining inside the Forgotten Temple. Somebody has to check the ceiling. Just because of where it is. For casual playthrough, even though this is a Blessing Shrine, it's too special. It's it's too good. Like, yes, it is easy to dodge all of these Guardians. But I think if you think about Shrines in general, and you think about memorable ones, you think about this one. You get the Tunic of the Wild here after beating every single Shrine. It's in a very cool location. Technically, there's supposed to be a challenging path to reach this. I was scared. 
going here for the first time. And even though, yes, it can be a 5 out of 5 gameplay-wise, it's just a Blessing Shrine, It's it, I, I think I would feel wrong to give it anything else. Like, there's a point to say, okay, we it's a Blessing, we've rated Blessings worse, but I, I think this one is too special, especially when we actually think about casual playthrough. That being said, this is going to be a 3 out of 5 for speedruns, I said before. 2 out of 5 is the base rating for a Blessing, but this shrine is drastically improved, kind of by its history and also what we do for it now. Um, when wind bombs first came out one of the coolest clips ever was when i saw somebody use a wind bomb to fly through this entire scary guardian section definitely a super memorable clip uh, and what we can do now and i can't uh, we can use the bomb slide instead to make our way through here let me see if i can instead maybe show you one of those original wind bombs which use a backflip just so you get the idea you want to make sure to get a pretty low angle for this fall down slightly, use the wind gust, and then fly all the way through. So the first time you see this sort of wind bomb, it definitely adds to the epic, uh, like the epic location. And uh, I think you can agree that this makes the blessing a little bit more spectacular. That's 120 shrines in Breath of the Wild. My ratings definitely uh, have some controversial ones in there. Make sure to understand that this is a biased list from me somebody that played this game a lot so my opinions have changed over time and my speedrunning opinion is obviously super biased depending on where i lost time and where i didn't lose that much time i wanted to do this rating for quite some time so um let me know your thoughts your favorite shrines and your least favorite shrines i uh, thank you guys for watching by the way on twitch.tv slash limcube i had fun literally ranting for six hours straight but it's probably a good time for my voice to take a break because i just talked for six hours on end